everybody out there in the world. Man, I got a treat tonight. Tonight's show's gonna be so freaking good. Let's get this party started. Oh, I cut the music off so fast. I forgot to do that. My little fade out trick that I normally do. Uh, Reba! Hello! 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 Let's yeah. get that. Let's get that full voice out there. Oh, you were next to me. Maybe you're not next to me anymore. Yeah, it said it. I left the collab and now oh, it's saying we connected. Hmm. Yeah. All right, let me fix that real quick. Uh, but before we do that, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Um, Hello. Uh, my name is Rima. I am the content creator behind the channel Rima Even Star on YouTube. I talk about VTubers, anything VTuber related, but I mostly do like uh, VTuber biographies and I'm interested in the lore. So thanks for having me today. I just need to reconnect to VTube Studio because apparently VTube Studio said it lost connection to Steam. Maybe we'll be able mm. to get you back onto the collab server. Oh, so we're you're looking at my arcade. Yeah, uh, I have mm -hmm. turned off VTube Studio temporarily, so we are standing around in the my Countess's arcade here while I get VTube Studio back up and running. This is my retro. Really this is my retro gaming zone where I do it's all my pretty. discussion about retro gaming. Okay, I have. What kind of games do you like playing? Uh, I play a little bit of everything. Uh, definitely mm. retro. Definitely. Okay, so I am hitting hosting collab again. Okay. And we'll see if we can get you back in the hosted collab. Let, but it took me a second to get everything set up before. So if not, we're going to have to do the... I, I really want to see your lovely bottle. On they should get a chance to yeah, see Yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, uh, you know how technical, thing, how technical things are. Double D's for My SNES, yeah. Join the left. Yeah, it keeps disconnecting me. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if it's my end or yours. Uh, you can always try having you host. A we had this working, guys, before. <laughs> before the stream. For oh, real. Wait, you're on. It's, you're back. I swear it was working, and as soon as the stream started, it stopped working. I know. You're back, though. Yay. It says. It says. Let's get this screen back on. Yay. Yay. Rima. We made it. Hey, we it. we're back. <laughs> Guys, you know, it's VTuber, VTuber scuff. We are, I'm not a professional streamer. I'm a college professor. But I'm a, but I'm a part-time streamer. I'm a semi-professional streamer. <laughs> I make a little money. I don't know. What's a professional streamer anyway? Uh, Rima, Rima is definitely more professional streamer than I am. Yeah, she's no, here. No, definitely she's not. Here. Well, it's delightful to have you. It's delightful to have you here. Thank um, you. So we talked a little bit about what we're going to talk about, but I haven't shown you any of the presentation I'm about to give. Um, as mm -hmm. we mentioned, Yurima covers VTubers um, and covers um, all kinds of internet culture stuff, increasingly, I would say. Yeah. Yep, I your, do that. Your latest and videos. I'm going in this, this stream completely blind, so <laughs> I'll be relying on you. Yeah, your latest stream was about your latest video was about Pippa. We watched that; it was really fun, fun video. Oh, you enjoyed it? Yeah, yeah. The sense of humor is hilarious. Like the op the cold open when you like walk into the Walmart. I yeah, died. I died. I, it's so I funny. was wondering if I'd lose people <laughs> before the action started, but I think it turned out great. No, I thought it was terrific. Uh, if y'all haven't had a chance to watch Rima's channel on YouTube, you're also on Twitch, and you said. On your last stream, you are going to be on Twitch a little bit more in the future. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna try to stream there. Maybe dual streaming. Do you ever dual stream? I haven't done any um, any dual streaming yet. Um, I have tried out YouTube streaming periodically, but since most of my audience is here on Twitch, I don't know. But uh, what I'm what I will do is upload this vod either in one or two parts, depending on how it goes, because the first part of this vod is going to have some slides. Uh, I have cut my BGM to yep. make it like a good conversation. And the second part of this VOD is going to be more video reacts. And I, I might do like a two-part VOD. But definitely the first part will upload the whole thing, the lecture portion of the VOD. And by the way, if you're here for, for me, if you're here for Rima, ask questions, chat during this. Because I, when, as a teacher, I like to, it, like to make things very interactive for everybody involved. And... Like, the last time I did lecture content was, uh, well, last time I did it was we had Professor Ariat on here talking about Doki Bird, mm -hmm. which we're huge fans of. And then prior to that, I also did the VTuber boob review. And I tried oh. to prepare my talks. <laughs> I tried to be very prepared about my talks. So what we're going to talk about today is a brief history of feminism in gaming Ooh. with a sidebar on ethics in gaming journalism. Um, is and, that your background? 
This this is my usual uh, demo backdrop. What's here, Rima's boobas be? So Rima, am I allowed <laughs> to talk about your boobs? I don't want to sure. objectify you without your permission. <laughs> okay, so everybody, uh, Rima's boobs are great. They are definitely S tier boobs because what we, we got going on here is like the nice presentation with the push up and the cleavage, but the, but the, but the jiggle is very subtle. It's not overwhelming. Um, you want no, no, you, they're good though. They're good. Listen, thank you. If you watch the boob asset review, sizes and everything, it's not just about how big they are. It's also about mm-hmm. uh, the presentation. And I think you've got both of those things. You've got a nice size. You got a nice presentation. Thank you. I think you have a very nice presentation as well. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I forgot to show this off last time I streamed, but when I was on fall sides, I noticed that he put a little like a little like box in front of my cleavage. Like I've got too much. So awesome. just in case now I have the cleavage censored oh, cleavage sensor. Oh, if you need the cleavage sensor, there it is. <laughs> That is smart. Did you do that yourself? Yes, I do. I have do. the toggle added? Yeah, I did add my own toggle. Um, mm. I, I, and then you can remove the chains as well, but that puts like a weird little gap. So I don't know how I feel, how I feel about that. No, I think it looks good. It's pretty cute, right? Mm-hmm. Um, my artist is Jerry. Jerry's down in my little bio if you want to know more about him, them. But um, I did do the little alterations myself because I am a rigger. So I do my own rigging. Oh. Um, so the rigging was done by me. You wear many hats. I do. Well, so a little bit about me, if you don't know, um, I am a teacher and I have taught both computer science, which is what I'm teaching now, and art, which is what I have taught in the past. So I'm kind of a double threat. Um, I've done a little bit of both of those things. Uh, yeah. And, and all those things intersect where it comes to talking about video games and video game culture. And the reason I'm talking about video games and video game culture right now is because I think there's obviously a lot of crossover. CompSci, Pog, yeah, yeah. CompSci is my primary thing that I teach. Um, right now I'm teaching some coding um, and in the, uh, I guess that's all I should really say without going into too much detail, but teaching Java. Um, and Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I've you're, learned, this is how you can kind of connect the art part and your computer uh, major? Yeah, actually, my major in college was computer animation. Oh, so I'm okay. Both an artist and a coder. I've done I've done both. So cool. that's kind of a nice. It's a nice dovetail for me because I can talk about animation and animation history. I can also talk mm-hmm. about code from a technical perspective, and it gives me like video game like two sides of the coin because like uh, except for audio, which I'm trying to improve at now. Um, no, you are just in time. Folks that are, that are tuned in, we have not actually started the presentation. Nope, so we're just talking. You're just talking. If you if you don't mind, yeah. what coding is popular in CS? I heard you mention Java. So do you mind um, if I answer that question real quick for the folks out there? Um, whatever you think is cool to learn. What what we taught the freshmen was C plus plus. Um, but yeah, so game dev is largely C plus plus. Yes, very good. Yeah, definitely. So if you're if you're interested in coding. C++ is a beast to learn, though. It's got a lot of little foibles and tricky bits. If you want to develop games, learn whatever. I, learn learn whatever. Um, Java still? I mean, it depends. Uh, Java and C Sharp are very similar, and C Sharp jobs are highly in demand. So if you're looking for... I've got a friend, C Sharp Fritz, out here who teaches, who does primarily C Sharp, and she's a, he's a good follow if you want to learn more about coding in C Sharp. Um... For a hobby, uh, I've been doing Python lately. My hobby coding is in Python. Uh, Unity is C sharp as well. Yeah. So if you want to use, if you want to learn Unity, C sharp is the one to learn. Um, STEM college only did Python. Python's great, easy to learn, which is nice. I'm gonna shout out C sharp Fritz real quick. If anybody has questions about computer science, he's a good guy to talk to. He is a he's a C sharp coder primarily, of course, as you can tell by the name. But Python is great. Um, Python's great for web applications. Oh, there's a lot. Oh my God. Oh, we're going to oh, get, nice. okay, I got to turn off the, the alert sounds or we're going to get, we're still going to get the gift subs though. <gasps> Thank you so much for the gift subs. My, my sub, I think it's so long here. You guys can watch it one time. Yay. Conflict and rule the galaxy as fanboy and son. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be my follow alert, but it's way too long now. <laughs> So you guys get to give subs out. Thank you. Is Python good? Yes. Uh, Python's great. Easy to learn. Um, and you can use it to make RenPy games, which are visual novels. So if you like to see, uh, if you like to see uh, girls, boobs, uh, visual, py- RenPy, Python, great language to learn. 
Oh, I would love to have a visual novel. You know what? We should make a visual novel, Reva. Why don't we yeah. make a visual novel? That'd be really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah we should. Okay, project set. Put that on your goals list. We'll mm -hmm. do it as soon as I'm done coding the other things I have to go. I'm going to write it down before I forget. Oh, let's let's go ahead and go into my... Where's my slideshow? Uh, sorry if in advance if my desktop flashes. It's still Pomu. It's been Pomu. Dibs on voicing the problematic characters so the internet yells at me. Absolutely. Um, question. Women. Do we play video games? Do we make video of games? Do we star in video games? <laughs> and question of all, do we know things? And the answer, of course, is yes, yes, yes. And we try. I don't know. I try. Yeah, a Pomodachi. So, Pomu was my Kami Oshi. Um, okay. I, I no longer have any reason to support Niji Sanji now that Pomu mm. is a yeah, nice Bojack Horseman reference. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for catching that. Thank you. Can I make cool decisions oh, now? <laughs> it disconnected me. Oh, Damn that's it. such a bummer. Oh, geez. We keep losing you. Let me see. Let me see if you can get you disconnected. Reconnected again. Um, I think you just need, yeah. to, I think you just need to jump back in because it says I'm still online. Yeah, it says my connection through Steam is gone, so. Tech. Technology. It's fun. We'll get her. We'll get her back. We may have to go to. We have to go to the 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 Fujis for a bit. Yeah, we might. Do you have it set up? I do. I just gotta add the source back into the. Okay. Um, I'll send you my Fuji, just in case. There you go. Okay. In case it doesn't. No, we'll just get that working. I often use the Fujis when I don't. Hopefully that'll pop you back in. I just said it, so. I'm joining. Okay. Am I in? Are you back in the collab? Uh, it says I, I'm joined. Okay, then you should be in just a second. It just takes, there's like a little bit of lag. Okay. There you go. Yep, we're back. Nice. Hopefully, hopefully it, won't keep, it won't keep dropping. I think we're far I away know. from each other. Maybe that's the issue. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll move closer to you. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, whoops, I moved too much. No, I'm you're covering fine. your... You're fine. No, <laughs> we're, we're good right here. Oh, as long oh, as we're okay. all visible. I, I tried not to put too much in the bottom corner of the slides, but I don't know. I, I'm not that great at slides. Um, yeah, so Bojack Horseman joke. They look better than nice mine. <laughs> Before I go into any further detail about Gamergate, mm -hmm. Gamergate is a Gamergate is a topic that did not start when people think Gamergate started. Gamergate has its tenth anniversary is this year. Gamergate was 2014. Um <laughs> and okay, that's a long time ago. Everybody in the chat is calling you horse girl, but Rima has yeah. informed us all she is a kitsune. That's mm -hmm. what it says in my little tags. But I, yeah, if Rima's allowed to be in front of me, that's okay because I just dropped. Yeah, respect backwards. my yeah. race, guys. Respect your race. Don't don't mm -hmm. miss don't miss race her. Although mm -hmm. I there, I didn't intentionally make a horse joke on one of these slides. It just kind of happened. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> chat's gonna love that one. It wasn't intentional. It just kind of happened. Um, you know, sometimes I make jokes on slides. It can't be helped. Uh. <laughs> so much of my framing for this part of the presentation comes from this particular Artagon, article, Artagon, article from Polygon, which is a video games website mm -hmm. uh, that you may be familiar with. This article yeah, I am. was posted in, oh, and I obviously need to move my display thing above. It was posted in 2013. So it is before Gamergate officially started, and I already see some naysayers in the chat that don't appreciate my use of Polygon. But let me, let me tell you, folks, we're going to go into it. 2013, this article was posted. This is an article about the story behind the stereotype of video games being only for boys. And the reason I'm talking about this is obvious, right? Because I don't think that this is necessarily true. Mm -hmm. um, 
But I think the way the article frames this is really important because we're going to use some of the quotes from this article to discuss like further things about why people exactly it's marketed for boys. Exactly. Exactly. So we're going to talk about the difference between reality and marketing, essentially. Um, <laughs> what what does it mean to be marketed to? How annoying is it to be marketed to? Um, how good is it to be marketed to? All those fun things. So that's the reason this article was used. And as an academic and a teacher, I like to cite my sources. So if you see little links on this PowerPoint presentation, it's because I got that from somewhere. And if you don't see a little link, it's because uh, source I made it up. No, mm -hmm. source, source it was knowledge from my own brain from being an ancient gamer. And if you're not familiar with my content, I, my branding is that I'm an ancient internet vampire. I am both a spider and a vampire because I'm on the internet, so I crawl the web. Oh, I get that's clever. I'm going to start um, the <laughs> start my talk about video games with the 1980s. Video games weren't necessarily invented in the 1980s. They do. Uh, they are a little bit older than that. Oh, yeah. Well, meme, oh, memes. I've never I've never done a meme in my life. Don't be ridiculous. Uh, video games are older than that. But we're going to start in the 1980s because this is a good place to start. In the 1980s, we had this thing called the arcade. Hey, are you for, I, I'm covering the ass. Are you all familiar with this picture? This picture here? Mm. No, actually, no. It's a great picture. Yeah, it's a great picture, right? So in the 1980s, uh, video games were for everybody, but you may surprise you to know that video games were for grown-ups. Yeah, we're not that post, makes sense. We're not post-video game crash. The post-video game crash was 1983. So we're pre-video game crash. That's a nice butt, I know. A great butt. I'm covering it, but you can see the, you can see the butt. Yeah, like, okay. Um, if you... You know, I do a lot of boob content on this stream, but every once in a while, I got to feature a couple nice asses just, yeah. for, just for like <laughs> solidarity, right? So, yeah, got to give it to you out of hands to the ass men. Um, in the 1980s, arcades were also bars a lot of the time. So there was this, I don't know, I think there's like a little, there's like a little bit of a stereotype that games were for kids, but actually there was a little bit of a confusion about that because games were in bars and then, the adults who were making yeah they only let me inside it was mostly an adult thing exactly and they mm -hmm. were trying to figure out how to make games more kid friendly and figure out what kind of games would appeal to kids because these games were not really for kids now i'm gonna tell you a couple things about this picture this okay. picture was adapted into a black mirror episode the tv show black mirror yeah i've seen them mm -hmm. yeah yeah you've seen these two girls right uh, this picture I, is actually from a porno shoot. Oh. <laughs> Which is why they're so damn hot. So yeah. either, either, either I'm sorry to break the illusion or you're welcome. You may find the rest of the pictures. Depending on what you're interested in. <laughs> I personally have seen all the pictures. And let me tell you, there's some stuff in this picture. Uh, that's the shallow, <laughs> this is the shallow lore. Oh, no, we're going to go deep. We're going to go deep. Ariat's here in the chat. Hi, Ariat. No four kids. Well, they shifted the games to kid friendliness because they wanted to market games to everybody. And let's just talk about a couple of the games that were in arcades in the 1980s. Centipede. Here's a woman enjoying Centipede because she is so excited to be playing oh, Centipede. Uh, She's Centipede enjoying it very much. Designed by a woman and a man combo. Designed by Donna Bailey and Ed Logg. Um, one of the reasons that they said this game was popular with women is because it had a female designer on it. And because there was a lot of pastels, a lot of cute little critters. If you've ever played Centipede, they're super cute. Oh, oh yeah. All these older arcade things. Like, you're going to see like a lot of women just leaning against the consoles because that was just kind of what they did. With the pictures for oh. arcades, a lot of like, like okay. which they really wanted to show that like this will attract You're into it. girls and get you girls. Yeah, which is really different from how these things ended up. I think where it was like ignore mm -hmm. the girl to play the video game. Back in the day, it was the video games are hot and girls will love you if you're good at video games. <laughs> yeah, oh game yeah, it's, <laughs> it's crazy how the perception has changed. <sighs> I'm going to tell you why. Are you excited? I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. um, here's Ms. Pac-Man. Ms. Pac-Man was actually the sequel to Pac-Man. 
Um, it was supposed Pac-Man originally they when they invented Pac-Man, they they had the idea was that they wanted to make a game that would appeal to women, so they made it a game about eating. Okay. <laughs> Do you like eating? Sure. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't like eating? True. Right. I mean, but that was saying there was our idea. They're like, well, it's not not a violent game. It doesn't have all the guns and shooting. People were actually saying that shit mm. back in nineteen eighty two. They were like, hmm, let's have a game with, with less guns and shooting. Yeah, because the guns nothing. that were in arcades were the laser little pew pew guns were really masculine. Yeah, for sure. And they wanted to make it like more feminine, so they're like, let's make it about eating. But Miss Pac-Man is a high standard for glam. That yeah, she's a really unrealistic standard for bodies. This is the beginning of unrealistic body standards. I can't mm. become a completely round orb. I've tried, but I don't know what kind of diet and exercise you got to do to become a completely <laughs> round orb. Um, I will notice, by the way, a couple things. Uh, some people have spread the rumor that it's they used to call him Puck Man, but people would change it to fuck. He was never called Puck Man. Um, he was called Pac Man because it's like the the noise that he makes. Pak pak pak. I guess it's oh, Japanese. Oh, okay. So okay, Japanese automatopoeia words that get used in regular uh, and. And Ms. Pac-Man was the sequel to Pac-Man. There wasn't a lot of sequels back in those days. They didn't just put numbers after stuff. So they decided to make the sequel Ms. Pac-Man. Okay. And note, not Mrs. Pac-Man. Ms. Pac-Man was the more liberated way of saying you were a married woman. Because in the 80s, it was Ms. versus Mrs. And they, they went with Ms. just because it flowed better, I think. But... Scott Scott Pilgrim lied to you. I'll try not to lie to you. But if Scott Pilgrim lied to you, I'm sorry. <laughs> they went with so Ms. she's the liberated woman. Exactly. She's like okay. a more um I, I don't know. Is it as a as a feminist? Is it is it say is it is it too early to call Miss Pac-Man feminist? Can I say Miss Pac-Man is feminist? Because she's she's equal to Pac-Man. And her game is flat out better. If you've played Pac-Man and then played Miss Pac-Man. Miss Pac-Man is just Pac-Man 2. It's better in every conceivable way. It's just a better thing. <laughs> okay. So good for her for leading the way for female mm -hmm. protagonists in video games. And good for Donna Bailey for leading the way for female designers making video games. So already we're like off to a good start. It's only the early 80s. I got this from uh, archive archive.org uh, online. And I want to point out a couple of things about ancient games back in the day. Do you know who Jumpman is? No. It's Mario. Oh, Dropman. That's how you Jump called Man. him? Yeah, but before he was Jumpman, he, before he was Mario, he was called Jumpman. And Interesting. They called him Jumpman because he jumps. And then they eventually named him after, I want to say, the janitor at Nintendo. Was he Nintendo back then? Mm-hmm. Always. Always. So, so they, Nintendo came up with those concepts? Yes. Nintendo came up with Mario, first called Jumpman, when they made Donkey Kong, which was originally a Popeye game. Um, but it stopped being a Popeye game when they realized that the sprite they wanted for the bad guy was too big to effectively be... Yep, yeah, somebody else in chat knew that. Yeah, it was too effective. It was the, the sprites were like too big and awkward, so it didn't really work. So they decided to change the characters to something original. So Popeye, the guy that eats spinach? Mm-hmm. Yep, it was oh, okay. So, uh, so Nintendo owns all of these IPs. Were they um, huge back then, or was this their start? Popeye is big in Japan. Nintendo didn't own the IP, but they did have the rights. Okay. Uh, so they were going to originally do it. And they eventually did make a Popeye game, uh, but it wasn't as popular as Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong was more popular. Yeah, Donkey Kong is huge. Right. Yeah, the Popeye game is not as good. Popeye does go public domain next year, if anybody else wants to fuck around with a Popeye game. Popeye is coming to the people. Nice. I'm so excited. I love Popeye. Popeye's huge in Japan. Has it been 50 years already since Popeye? That's uh, 50? Crazy. Uh, 90. 90? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, that's the cutoff. So, it's been a long time. Popeye's been with us for a long time. <laughs> we get to have Popeye. He comes back to the people next year. I think that's way more excited than Mickey Mouse, to be honest. Mickey Mouse is kind of boring compared to Popeye. Popeye could whip buddy somebody's ass. <laughs> yeah, that he could. But we don't get Mario for a long time because um, Mario was invented in the 80s. 
Um, but what I want to point out here is they have a little age appeal thing, and they also have a sex appeal thing. 50% male, 50% female. Okay. They believed that Nintendo yeah. games were for everybody. Um, yeah. Here's Pac-Man, 60% female, 40% male. Strong appeal to women accredited to its non-violent theme. Oh wow! They really thought this would appeal to women more than men, even. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did. That was their. That was their. That was their feeling. That first of all, Pac-Man is cute, and Pac-Man doesn't do violence really. Um, like a lot of the games back then had guns and stuff. So if you look at Asteroids, they say this one's for men. It's stereotypically a male game. Really? That's what they said. I mean, this was 1982, so I don't know for sure, but that's what they said. Um. Because you fly around and shoot stuff, and I guess they just kind of had this feeling that flying around and shooting stuff was for boys. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it appeals to all ages, and those with a stamina to keep at it. I find Asteroids to be the most clunkiest-ass game. I've played it my whole life, but I find it to be very clunky. Old way of thinking. Well, yeah, yeah. I think I played a lot more Pac-Man, so maybe they were right about the female thing. <laughs> maybe. Maybe Pac-Man's just a better game, though. I don't know. Yeah. Miss Pac-Man's Simple better and than efficient. Pac-Man. I'll try that one. Yeah. I hope, I hope they don't pull the Winnie the Pooh. God. Make a horror game, a horror movie out of Pac-Man. Pac-Man, spinach and blood. Or not Pac-Man. Popeye, Popeye. <laughs> Popeye, spinach and blood. <laughs> you know, they went right to the shock horror movie for Mickey Mouse, too. There's already a hor- Mickey Mouse horror movie that's been pitched. Is it going to be animation? Um... No, it's like a live action Mickey Mouse comes out of a the- live action Mickey mm-hmm. Mouse. Yeah, it's really stupid. Pac Man, we got a while on though. That was the 80s. It won't be public domain for a long time. Oh, I'm covering part of the quote, but I want y'all to read it because it's a really important quote. So mm. I'm going to just move out of the way for a second. Uh, it, this quote is from Carol Shaw from Atari. Mm-hmm. And here's what she had to say. We never really discussed who our target demographic was. We didn't discuss gender or age. We just did games. We thought they would be fun. Which I, I think we can all agree. Based. Right? Yeah, yeah, based. Right? Like, this is based. Like, we just made the games that we thought would be fun. We didn't give a shit who they were for or why. Um, this was one of Atari's... This was Atari's first female programmer, I believe. Carol Shaw. Best way to make games. Yeah, I think we can all agree. I think we can all agree. Based. Yeah, she wants to make fun games. Unbelievable. How dare, how dare a woman want to make fun video games? Did we, did we decide, when did we decide that wasn't allowed? Before I go any further, though, I do want you to know, I do want you to know something, which is that video games have also always been political. And I think it is impossible to make art and not do a little politics. Here's a quote from David oh. Thurr from 1980. Um, there was a game they made for the Atari called Missile Command, and Missile Command is about shooting cities with missiles. So you're you're basically dropping missiles, dropping bombs on cities, and you try to shoot. Your job is to like shoot anti-air missiles to stop the guys from bombing your city. Um, and it was pretty explicitly a Cold War game idea. People had fears of nuclear annihilation. Um, and they expressed that in this game. So in this article, again, it's Polygon. Sorry if you don't like Polygon, but it is. Mo- I'm mostly just using it for quotes from the actual developers rather than like the, what, the, what the editorializing was because the quotes from the developers are what I'm interested in. Um, Missile Command embodied this cold world, the Cold War. So I would dream that I was hiking and with fabulous views of San Francisco Bay. And I, in the dream, I'd see the missile streaks coming in and know the blast would hit me. He didn't... He, the graphics are so primitive, guys. If you look up Missile Command, it's like little tiny pixels shooting pixels at each other. But there was still <laughs> politics in the work, and there will always be politics when there is art. I've played it. It's great. It is great. It's a great game. Um, but I think that we sometimes, because we are making art, we sometimes don't know for sure how to express like what the line of where political is for when political is too political. You know, so um, just, you know, I, I don't think we can actually separate X-Men Civil Rights is another great example. Yeah, it's a really good story, but it's about something. And this is a game about something. Anyway, here's a game about tits. Um, <laughs> a 
Oh, Missile Command is 100% political. I bet that game didn't look like that at all. <laughs> no, this game was a text adventure. There was no graphics in this game at all. Does anybody know what, this co what cover this game? That is Roberta Williams. You're right. That is Roberta Williams on the right there in the hot tub. This is the cover of a game called Soft Porn. So it was like a porn game? Yep. How is the game about tits? It's a game called Soft Porn. Um, the game is called Soft Porn. It was made but with no for graphics? home computers. Yeah, you had to imagine uh, the tits. They were described. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. You had to use your imagination. Uh, it's one of the earliest home hentai games. Um, but this was before PC games had graphics. So you had, it was like a, a visual novel, like interactive. Uh, well, it was like a visual novel, but without the visual part. Oh, without the visuals. Yeah. Right. You're going to have to emulate that one. As described, sounds very woman friendly. I mean, w why wouldn't it be? Women participated in the, in the depiction and in the actual, yeah, romance novels sell for a reason. I wish titties were real. Mm. <laughs> King's Good Quest point. Lady Gone Wild. I show this picture not only to show a female game developer in the wild because I think it's very funny, but they later did make a graphical version of this game. That game was called Leisure Suit Larry. So now you can see. <laughs> now you can see oh. the tits. Now I'm a fan of Leisure Suit Larry. I've said that so much, and I even said that in my debut. Um, I like Leisure Suit Larry games a lot. Leisure Suit Larry was the first time I saw a game with like multiple women you could talk to in it. It was the first time a game passed the Bechdel test for me. <laughs> was that the first, like, not hentai because it's not Japanese, I guess, but was that the first, like, adult game? Wait, just, okay. Was it so it was not the first adult game. Um, adult games were made by people of all shapes and sizes. And I, I would say soft porn is one of the earliest adult games. In terms mm. of graphical adult games, there were other games around that time. Leisure Suit okay. Larry was made by Al Lowe, who adapted soft porn into a graphical adventure. So a man. Um, but yeah, strip poker. Yeah, there was lots of like light hentai games. Oh, and I've done I've played a lot of hentai games. So if I ever like use hentai games as an example for things, just know that that's just where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Okay. We're gonna need some I recommendations. To, I used to animate for hentai games, so um Oh wow. you gotta make your money somehow. That's cool. Uh <laughs> I have no I have no qualms about discussing this stuff, but hopefully nobody gets offended if I talk about the hentai and stuff like that. But yeah, Leisure Suit Larry was not made by women. Uh, Al Lowe made Leisure Suit Larry, but it was based on soft porn, which was made by Sierra Online is the name of the company. Now, here's a better picture of Roberta Williams at work. She, her and her husband, Ken, ran this company, Sierra Online. And as home computing goes, they were pioneers in video game development. They created a lot of really classic adventure games, including the one you see on the left, uh, which was The Perils of Rosella. Perils of Rosella. Look at how girly that is. There's a unicorn yeah. and a vampire. I love that. I it, played that game. It's based. It's so based. Um, but it is a video game with a female protagonist in mm -hmm. the 80s, which is nice to see. Custer's Revenge was a low mark even for its era. Yeah, I mean, we're not talking about Custer's Revenge here. Custer's Revenge is like a racist porno game. <laughs> Uh, Sierra was terrific. Sierra made a lot of stuff. And they did have a like a male, female, husband, wife team working on the games. And they also had, of course, a lot of other employees. It wasn't necessarily a two-person house. But the King's Quest games are pretty fun. They're and very gender balanced because there's a, you know, you you play as the king, you rescue the queen, then you play as the prince, then you play as the princess, then you play as the queen. So there's a lot of different characters you can play as in these games, and they're all really they're all really cool to play as. So if you haven't played a King's Quest game, they were definitely a big part of my childhood. Um, and yeah, one of the designers there was a woman. She worked on a lot of their games and really popular with women, although they are very hard. I think. <laughs> we talked last night about Castlevania. Yeah, you know, Castlevania is not in my slides, but another based game. Castlevania was made in the 80s? Uh, yeah, their first one. It's, oh. a, it's a Nintendo game. Oh, so that so the anime came after. Oh, way after, yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, Nintendo. At this point, 
Nintendo. Oh, so people asked about the game crash. That was in 1983. Uh, what in is the game crash? Yeah, in 1983, the game industry didn't do so well due to a number of factors, one of which was that they had too many games releasing too fast at too much of a rush, and there just wasn't enough people buying them. Um, Nintendo- it wasn't big back then. Yo, and they, they put out too much stuff, and like the home mm. ports for a lot of the Atari games were like kind of garbagey. Okay. Uh, a lot of people say E.T. was the biggest problem, but actually there was tons of bad games coming out around that time, um, including like the whole port of Pac-Man was trash. Like they just the games just were not selling very well and they were rushing them out super fast and people didn't like them. Yeah, E.T. is just the funny one. Oh, if you don't know about the E.T. video game, I think people in, co- in the chat are familiar with it. But like there was a whole documentary about the E.T. video game because it's such a sh- crappy game. Um, like code wise, well, or I'm not gonna blame the ev- developer because he really had to rush it out because they're like, we need to get this out in time to make to make take advantage of the movie. He only had like four weeks mm. to code it, but the design of it is just impossible. It's so impenetrable and so weird and incomprehensible to understand. And okay, and it's not fun to play. <laughs> it's just not a fun video game to play. <laughs> it had no shot, but yet they were so sure that it was going to sell super well that they made more copies of the et cart than they had sold atari consoles oh god why they were just they were so confident that it was going to be the biggest hit so they made so many versions of it and they sold and they didn't sell at all so what happened was they ended up having to bury them like underground yep in the dirt why? Because they just didn't know what to do with them. They they just threw them all in a junk pile in a get a. Oh no! They yeah. didn't have recycling back then. No, they had no recycling. There was Oof. no way to recycle them. They just Oof. threw them all in a landfill. Um. So relatively recently, uh, people came and dug the landfill up and actually dug out. I I don't want to say recently. It was probably ten years ago. They actually dug out the ET cartridges. They're probably worth more now. Uh, the problem is that I, I have talked to a person who owns an E.T. cart dug out of the landfill. I have talked to a person who owns one. And here's the problem with the E.T. carts dug out of the landfill. They smell like melted garbage. Because they <laughs> are melted garbage. Yeah. <laughs> so they're really hard to flip. Because you can't get that smell of being buried for 25 years or whatever. Ugh. The earth, no, the earth rejected it. They did not disintegrate. They are in good <laughs> shape, but they stink. Apparently. <laughs> so d- that was the Atari Allegedly. we have on screen right now? Oh, on screen is Rob the robot. He came with the Nintendo. What? So oh the, my god, that thing is huge. It is huge! Have you ever seen the, the task bot when they, go, they do the, the live streaming for um, speedruns? They have a Rob the robot. Rob the robot used to be shipped with, packed with Nintendo. That must be like two hundred dollars worth of shipping. Oh my god! I don't even know what, what a Rob the Robot is worth these with days. With the N- Nintendo, the first one, the first Nintendo, the one you played Super Mario on. Yep. So here's the question: I've never seen this robot. Do the video games go in the girl aisle or the boy aisle in the toy store? Um. Did they have gender aisles? I they feel absolutely like marketing did. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. I have no idea. They right. probably go in the boil aisles by they then. They do go in the boy aisles because it's got a sick robot. What girl would want a sick robot? That's not for girls. Mm. Mm-hmm. So back in the 80s, yes, uh, toy stores and honestly, toy stores like Toys R Us and stuff, they don't really have those around the way they used to. But it used okay. to be that you'd go to a big toy store, big box toy store, and there'd be pink aisles and black aisles. It wouldn't really be pink and blue. They usually like pink and gray. The pink aisle was where all the girly stuff is. Yeah, I love that aisle. Yeah, exactly. And then everything else is for boys. And they didn't know what to do with video games. They were just like, yeah, they're probably for boys. And that's where it started. That's where it started that they would subtly decide to market video games to boys and not to girls because we don't think they're for girls. Like, we just don't think that. And when you're marketing, you have to decide who you're marketing to which is kind of mm-hmm. dumb like a lot of toys weren't marketed to boys or girls like lego 
And then as time shifted forward and forward and forward, yeah, they just decided arbitrarily, well, we'll just market this stuff to boys. I th it, and it starts to create this self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm -hmm. um, when you played the video games, I don't think anybody really cared about if they were playing as a boy or a girl. Right? I'm not going to give a damn about that. I mean, some of the most epic games you play as a girl. It's totally fine. <laughs> Super Mario was so good. I <laughs> love that game. But I've cherry picked here because most games had a male protagonist. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think the common feeling in marketing is that girls will read books about boys, but boys won't read books about girls. Yeah, I even saw like a, an essay recently about how both in it was weird that like in Twilight and in Fifty Shades of Grey, they had this whole POV, this whole book that's based on the male's POV. Oh, yeah. POV. Did yeah. you watch, did you watch it that, uh, who's it, Contra Points? Did a big Contra, essay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's such a good essay, to be honest. Yeah, that was know. such a good essay. It, it really, I enjoyed said it. said so many things that I knew and had been thinking, but hadn't like academic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Me too. I, I, she got she got woman really right. Like, I totally yeah, agree. it's perfect. Most of the books with your young kind of high girl protagonist. Now, I'm not saying it's necessarily true that boys won't read books about girls. I'm just saying that's the marketing stereotype that people think. And so they, what they think of is like, well, a girl will probably play a game with a boy protagonist, but a boy probably won't play a game with a girl protagonist. So that's why you got the shift. And like, Samus is on here, but the instruction manual for the first... Metroid doesn't say Samus is a woman. It was a surprise to be saved at the end of the game. Oh, do I have? OK, not yet, not yet, because I have some clips of some stuff, but we're not yet. It's not not yet. So okay. we're going to be we're going to be going forward a little bit in the slides. Mm hmm. Counterpo yeah, there's you can think of tons of cherry picked counterpoints of like games that you played with the girl protagonist. But you there's lots of games that have men. There's lots of games that have women. But there's more games with men than women. It's just, if you count and buy the numbers, this is how it shakes out. So in the 90s, example here from Sonic the Hedgehog. Is that Donkey Kong? That's Sonic. No, that's Sonic, sorry. Yeah, it's Sonic. They all look... Sonic was cool. Sonic is cool. Yeah, Sonic is cool. We like Sonic. Um, mm -hmm. This is, sorry, this is like the longest paragraph that I've posted. So <laughs> that's it's a little okay. bit of a long one. But... um. This is what my point was here. The video okay. games industry created something of a chicken egg situation. When it conducted market mm -hmm. research, it found that more boys than girls played video games. What the, yeah. You know, I'm not going to talk about Sonic Chew, but only because that's a whole other can of worms that I don't think we have time for today or any day ever. That's the stream on its own. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, found that more boys than girls played video games. Boys were more likely to play with technology. They were more likely to be early adopters. They weren't the majority, mm. et cetera, et cetera. So video games were heavily marketed as products for men. Oh my God, I don't, I don't want to, no, not low. Uh, yeah, you're right, I'll do it, I'll do it. And it just became like, you know, a chicken and egg problem. We created this thing that we think is for boys and now girls don't want this thing. And then, yes, there was a separate girl games for girls aisle which we'll talk about at a later slide but yeah hi Akuma. like barbie's barn and you've got to take care of the horses and stuff bingo i told you there was one horse joke that's it <laughs> wait really <laughs> so doom came out in 1993 and it mm -hmm. was extremely 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 popular you might be familiar with doom from video mm -hmm. games but I didn't know it was that old. I thought it was a rel relatively like new franchise. 1993. Wow, I'm learning yeah. a lot. Yeah. And the other game that came out in 1993, if you weren't playing Doom, you were playing Myst. But you maybe never played, Reba. Have you played Myst? No, that's a pretty game. It's very pretty. Um, this was one of the cutting edge graphical games at the time. And what made it, one of the things that made it very popular was it came with your PC a lot of the time. Oh, y'all haven't seen Mist? I should play Mist. Mist is great. Mist is really, it's an old puzzle game. It's a first person point and click puzzle game. Oh, um, okay. It has a story. It has some, and you should play Pissed, the parody of Mist. Um, and it was pretty mm -hmm. popular with women. It's nonviolent. 
there's mm, yeah, yeah yeah it's about exploration um and the visuals are really cool as you can see for 1993 so it's really popular with women and so was how do you this. sorry go, go ahead. ahead well hi I feel like, oh, exactly, you're going on Sims now. Like, I feel like something that women really like is, uh, but I don't know what this genre is called, like a building game or games like Neopet where you got to, like, take care of your stuff or, like, the Barbie games where you had to, like, feed your pets and The Sims kind of falls into that category. I feel like these games are probably marketed to women. Absolutely. And I think that when they created The Sims, well, Will Wright Mm -hmm. is the designer... Um, created the Sims. Yeah, simulation games is what you're talking about. That's the genre, basically, like simulation games. Uh, I don't know that he necessarily knew it would be more popular with women than men, but it is kind of like a dollhouse in a way. Oh, yeah, it totally is. Right? So you've got to got all these yep. people, your dollhouse, and you make it. And since there's like an aspect of romance and you're kind of caretaking for people. Now, obviously, we also all caretaking. Our- yeah. You're probably <laughs> burning babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the second I said that, I thought, except for the times when you lock your sim in a bathroom with no food. Oh yeah. Oh, I want to play Sims now. Such a good game. <laughs> or, or take the point of in a pool and take the ladder away. Oh, I love that. That's a classic. Sims bring us our yeah. People women like torturing people too. Yeah, it's a, it's a stereotype that women don't want violence in our games. We just want it to be really personal. <laughs> Or the hundred baby challenge. I've seen that. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. The breeding basement (laughs) grounds. The basement breeding. I I saw one where somebody put like a a, what they call an art goblin in their basement and they have them make paintings so the house gets money and they never let the art goblin out. But how do they oh yeah, and they don't die? No, they just feed them every once in a while. Oh, okay, they, they put, like, one they, toilet there. They give them, like, there. a bathroom and a toilet. They give them, like, a toilet and food. I want to try this concept now. <laughs> and the art goblin never leaves the basement, and they just sell their art online. And then it uh, makes everybody else has, like, a beautiful life. The art goblin just takes time. <laughs> That's such a good idea. So oh, my God, I want to play Sims. <sighs> um... Yeah, so this is the 90s, and then they, this, this franchise is, continues to be popular with women today and for with a lot of a lot of people but it's i think it's a lot mostly women i think it's a mostly female oriented gamer genre so already okay. i think i've established that women play games i think i've established that i love this game a lot that stars a woman that's got a woman in it oh by the way if you're not subbed you're going to be getting an ad break right about now and i apologize for that i'm sure there's ways around it um you know it is what it is um i run ads but so that you don't get a pre-reel and I've said that n- numerous times on my... Yeah, sorry about that. You're going to get a few ads. I'll be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like we went back a little on graphics there. I feel like The Sims was a little more advanced. Are these, like, in order of when they got released? Um, Super Metroid is 1994. And this is 1993. So no Metroid way. is actually later than Mist. Yeah. Okay. I guess because it's a platform game, it mm-hmm. uh, has that style. Uh, Super Metroid is very technologically advanced for its time. It barely oh. fit on a Super Nintendo cart. Um, it's actually a huge game for as big, <laughs> for as as primitive the as gra- it looks. Yeah. <laughs> the graphics were too insane. They are absolutely. This game is bonkers, cutting edge for 1990. Okay. Yeah, the difference between Metroid and Myst in terms of graphics is that this is a point-and-click adventure, and the original game is very still. PC graphics developed in a wildly different direction that had a lot of advantages. Yeah, I could do a brief digression about that. The first company to port Mario to PC was this company, ID, and they did it as a demo, later making it a game... um, uh, I'm blanking. I'm blanking on the name. Yeah, every new reviewer gets pre rolled. I'm, I'm kind of do- I'm kind of like stalling. Commander Keen. There you go. Thank you, Kuma. Commander Keen. Commander Keen was their Mario port uh, reskinned, um, and they did like a whole way di- way different version of level design. Sorry mm-hmm. again for all the ads. I realize you're going to get a lot of them. Um, when when that stops taking down, I will address the people who got ads. <laughs> I I also I think I will now turn the ad frequency down now that we're past the annoying doohickey thingy. 
But I gotta wait. I gotta wait 23 more seconds. All Kevin Hart. You back? Okay. Um. So for those of you that, for those of you that got ads just now, I'm gonna turn the ad frequency down. I have control over that. But the reason I run three minutes of ads is because I hate, hate, hate the pre reel because the pre reel will make your stream crash anytime you jump in, and I just absolutely despise it. But I have turned it down so you shouldn't see any for a while. Oh yeah, anyway, I was just talking about the difference between old graphics. So the tricky thing in these games is that on PC, it was really hard to get the smooth side scrolling that you were able to get on a console because of mm. how fast it rendered. So PC games were more suitable to like point and click or still games like that. Um, whereas the other games that were more suitable to like platformers where you move from side to side, um, you should be out of ads now, if not, hopefully. Uh, we, we would have like a different graphical style. So the platformers were still very much pixel art. Um, this is another game that stars women. I just happen to really like it. They had a lot of female protagonists in the RPGs of the era. That's Tara and Celeste Aww. if you've ever played Final Fantasy Cute. VI. Um, mm -hmm. Final Fantasy VI is a game about a bunch of characters, but primarily two women. Like the first the beginning starts the, the Tara story and the second half is Celeste's story. Great romance. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Super, super good game. I just like to talk about it. That's fine. I like to talk about people. Notable female game developers in the 90s. Um, and, and who are still around today. Um, Jane Jensen made adventure games and still does so sometimes from time to time. Her big thing in the 90s was the Gabriel Knight series. Uh, what I, I'll, I'll talk about Tomb Raider. I'll, oh my god, I'm going to talk about Tomb Raider. It just okay. wait. Oh yeah, just that is wait. a female protagonist, but <laughs> it's still more catered to men because That's, she's like Yeah, exactly. Spoilers. What's your impression <laughs> what's your impression of Tomb Raider? I mean I loved her. I I played Tomb Raider when I was a kid. I thought she looked so cool, so badass. I, I like used to draw her a lot. So yeah. I don't actually I it's definitely like the sexy girl, so I could see how it would appeal to men, but at the same time I also like that. I have cosplayed Lara Croft, so. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. like Lara Croft. I didn't used to, because of the way it was marketed, which I will show. I'm going to show an example of a commercial for Tomb Raider later, and you're going to cringe yourself into a singularity. When I I'm sure the graphics are way worse than I remember. Oh no, they're really bad. They're really yeah, bad. it's very male gaze. Mm -hmm. They're really bad. Um, yeah, and Yoko Shimomura was the composer for Street Fighter. Now, I don't have a lot of Japanese women on this list. And the reason is because uh, it was kind of hard sometimes in the Japanese games because they had this habit of not crediting people. Or they would credit them under aliases. So you kind of had to like dig and find out who the people actually involved were because they wouldn't be credited. So if you play like an old Japanese game, they'll use pseudonyms. Yeah, they'll use fake names. Okay. Yeah, so they, they don't actually tell you who the people are. But it, wasn't, it didn't mean there weren't women. It just meant that sometimes they weren't given credit, unfortunately. Uh, nobody was, though. But, yeah, by the way, that's fucking insane. Yeah, they didn't like to credit people. Um, well, Yoko Shimomura did work for Capcom at the time. Uh, she did Street Fighter 2, the music. Um, one of the composers on Mega Man 3 was also female. I got to meet her at MAGFest. It was really cool. Uh, Amy Hennig. Uh, I see a lot of people saying she's based. Yeah, Amy Hennig's based. She got robbed. Yeah, agreed, agreed, agreed. Um, Amy Hennig, producer, uh, director for games like Uncharted. Um, Legacy of Cain, if you've ever played Legacy of Cain, you mm -hmm. want to play a game written by a woman? That game is so girl-coded. It's, it's all like goth vampires who hate each other. Oh. It, it, yeah, it's, it's rad. Raziel is, such a, game. Raziel is such a baby girl. I mean, I like vampires, obviously, already. But, yeah. <laughs> we already did Roberta Williams' Kuma, and we got to see our titties. Yeah, rolling the 90s. Um, Brenda Romero, it was Brenda Braithwaite when she was doing stuff in the 90s. Um, Wizardry was the thing she worked on. Um, she's now married to John Romero, who is one of the creators of Doom. So that's kind of cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, hell yeah. I love uh, Dunes. She also made a game. The full title of the game is Playboy the Mansion. It was like The Sims with porn. I dig <laughs> that. <laughs> I mean, isn't The Sims already with porn? Is just censored. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was like The Sims with uncensored porn. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> That's the extra DLC. The extra, yeah, it's the uncensored Playboy the Mansion. Yeah, it, 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 I, I mean, obviously it's an older game. Uh, this, this is in my 90s slides. I think it came out in like, I don't know, 2006, <laughs> maybe? I don't know. It was a little bit later, but... Shutter Brother had room... I... <laughs> They're great. John and Brenda are great. I'm going to talk about them like they're my friends or something, but they're just a cute couple. What do you know? They both game. They both make games. Uncensored Playboy? Yeah, the Playboy game is... Well, Brenda also wrote a book called Sex and Gaming, so I guess I have a little... No bias. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Dai Katana. That's totally irrelevant to today's talk. Um, this is a picture of the Capcom sound team back in the 90s. So in case that's Yoko Shimomura on the left, I always again I always like give my little credits there. But uh, they, as you can see, it was a half. It was fifty fifty gender. The team was yeah. What well, was spread out among the genders? So they they basically didn't really care what gender was working on the games back then, and especially their sound team it had a lot of women on it. So I just again it wasn't really and. I listened to a podcast that Amy Hedig was on because I love her work. I think she's so cool. And she said that she got into making video games because it wasn't sexist. Okay, she, and that was in the, in the 80s? In the 90s. The 90s. Mm -hmm. Because she originally wanted to do movies, which mm -hmm. obviously it's true because of Uncharted and everything, um, you know, as a game. The Uncharted movie is terrible. Don't watch it. But the game is very movie-like. Because she wanted yeah, to go into movies. Um, but she said she had, uh, experienced a lot of institutional sexism from trying to want to be a camera operator and stuff. And when she decided she wanted to make video yeah. games instead, she didn't experience any of that. It's a lot of guys that are like holding the cameras and doing that. Mm -hmm. And then the girls are just like in the in the more womanly sections like makeup artist, you know, wardrobe uh, or on the camera. But yeah. it's very rare to see girls uh, doing the lights in the camera. They're very heavy. Mm -hmm. That was what they said to her. Yeah, they said, mm -hmm. like, you can't, you know, do this camera operation because it's too heavy for a woman. You can't do it. She's like, well, whatever. I'll make video games instead. And then she was extremely successful. In that oh, that's so, sick. Yeah, it's pretty, she's pretty cool. Um, and hot take, not at this point. I, yeah, I mean, we're going we're gonna to get to, like, the more conversational aspects of, of how it got to the way it is. But... I am going to again say that probably the majority of programmers were still men. And that is because once you hit the 80s, 90s, it's definitely more considered a male thing than it is a female thing. But if you look back even further in time, a lot more programmers were women. And the reason mm -hmm. that more programmers were women was because it was considered typing. Oh, yeah. Like a desk job. Mm -hmm. It's a desk job. So yeah, a, lot yeah, of, yeah. a lot of women were programmers mm -hmm. um which yeah you kind of slowly and this is just my pet theory i'm just throwing this out there but like anytime a lot of money and power enters an industry all of a sudden where do the women go the men just kind of throw them out <laughs> and they're like wait a minute this video game thing sure makes a lot of money i don't think we want women here anymore <laughs> it just it's just that's my observation but yeah, all right. Um, and brief digression, girl games. What about girl games? Barbie Horse Adventure. You oh, I love Barbie Horse Adventure. Listen, I had every damn Barbie horse. I still have Barbie Oh, Barbie horses. Fashion Designer. I love that game too. <laughs> so there was a- Or I wanted it. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I love those girly games. <laughs> I love, there was a Pink Isle game section that had- Girls games for girls. I didn't play a lot of the games for girls. I played regular games on the Nintendo that happened to have girls in them. But I but I think that these games are still games and they're still valid and you should still appreciate them for what they are, which is video games that girls play. Barbie fashion designer was like the tenth most popular video game of that year. Really? Yeah. It just Period. combined my love for fashion and like, you know, video games. It's Yeah. Yeah. So I think any girl who plays games that are like this are a gamer. Um, yeah, Rocket, this was designed by Brenda Laurel. Um, they, her, her company is Purple Moon. Um, and she just wanted to make like socially oriented games that appealed to teenage girls or to middle school age girls, I guess you could say. So these 
also existed. I was more of a Carmen San Diego kid. Actually, I played a lot of Mist. I really liked Mist and King's Quest. Yeah, we used to actually have teenagers back then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So these are also valid games. I think they're perfectly real games. And anybody who says if you don't play, play only play Barbie, you're not a gamer. Oh, I don't know. That's still gaming to me. If you sit on a gaming PC and play The Sims all day, you're still a gamer. I don't mm -hmm. care. So now we're moving into the 21st century. At this point, we've invented the internet. I have been on the internet for a very long time. And this is the true fact. There's no girls on the internet. You're not looking <laughs> at girls right now. There's no girls on the internet. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, it's not real. We're not real. It's not, it's not real. Actually, I gotta hand it to VTubers on this because I feel like VTubers have made female streamers um, a lot more visible and accessible and popular. Oh, yeah. Like, what do you think? I, it, it's actually the first community or even like workplace where I think I interact with females more than men, which is Seriously. kind of nice. And I, this would happen to me a lot where I would join a fandom that I thought maybe there wouldn't be a lot of girls there but then it turned out that everybody was girls because it's like something like fanfic where you're like slowly revealing like i was part of the ninja turtles fandom and you would be surprised how many women there are who love teenage mutant ninja who turtles are we? i was talking with somebody like a few days ago about how fanfics website were majorly uh, written by females a hundred percent that was definitely a female <laughs> and it didn't matter what it was fanfic for star trek uh, mm. I, uh, that was like the first fanfic ever but Wait, you you, turtles aren't for you read oh, Star no, Trek sorry. fanfic? I mean, I'm Did not trying I? to fanfic shame, but... No, I didn't read Star Trek fanfic, but I mean, it was the first fanfic that was oh. posted online, so... No way, um, that's some deep lore. Not, yeah, yeah, way. I mean, I... If, you, if, 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 if anybody's curious, um, S uh, Chrono Trigger was the fanfic that, <laughs> that I wrote the most of, but there was... Okay, I'm, I'm not... I, actually... I did read some Star Trek fanfic, but only to spork it because that was what you did back then. You picked fun of it. So like you were like, oh, this is stupid. So we're going to read it. But yeah, Mary Sue, that term is from Star Trek fanfic. Those fanfic websites is where I first like stumbled upon my first like um, sex, sexual scenes on the right, Internet. I was right. like, oh, whoa, I didn't expect that. <laughs> it yeah. was completely on accident. You found some spicy fanfics. They used to call them lemons. Yeah. Oh, yes, they did. I mm -hmm. remember now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, were, they, they used to call them lemon. They were like, oh, this is, this is like a partial lemon. Or like, I don't know. There was other terms. But I don't, mm. that's the only one that I remember. Anti fanfics, man. They didn't even have websites. Yeah, they did before the internet. Well, they posted them on Usenet. Usenet was all text. This is a famous comic from the New Yorker. I'm covering okay. the punchline. But it says, on the internet, no one knows you're a dog. <laughs> Nobody knows you're a dog. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, we all decide what animal we want to be. I'm a spider. Rima is a fox mm -hmm. or, or horse, depending. On the internet, nobody knows you're a horse. <laughs> so back before, people had to like give their real identity on the internet. But now we're back. Now we get to use cool avatars and stuff again and be ourselves on the internet more than we used to be. This became a paradox because when people see a person and that person isn't overtly gendering themselves like we're doing on purpose, they just assume it's a dude until it's proven otherwise. Yeah, that is true. Which is why this axiom of there are no girls on the internet appeared. <laughs> because the concept is like, there are no women on here because we just assume everybody's a man. And if you're a girl, you're not the default. So you have to prove it. To prove yeah, and, and if you are communicating with somebody on the internet with like a non uh, female or girly username people just automatically assume you're a guy too right or they'll call you sir and stuff kind of weird <laughs> so we started to get this like diverse diverting thing where people would assume you were a man and then they would say there's no girls here even mm -hmm. though there are girls here and there's always been girls here that's why vtubing is based to be honest I don't have to, like, put on all my makeup before I start a stream. That's the whole reason I started VTubing. Not because it's really fun. It is fun. But also just because I hated having to get ready for stream. Yeah. I'm not even wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> I hate pants. You like pants? Yeah, I hate pants. Right. 
So this brings us to the 2000s, and I'm sorry. Now we're going to get into some videos. And I want you to be aware that you're going to cringe your fucking face off at these videos. These are early 2000s okay. videos. Um, this is the Spike TV Game Awards. No, no, you're not ready. Are you not ready? Are you I don't think you're ready. I don't think you're I'm ready. ready. Okay. The Game Awards aired... The Game Awards aired on Spike TV, which was the man-only TV station. Um, it was TV for men. Um, and they... They decided because they had been marketing video games to oh, is that Olivia Munn? Maybe uh, they had been marketing video games to men this whole time. Then clearly it was only men who cared about video games and they had the man show and they had the game awards. And I think this is the first game awards. Um, I'm going to show you some clips from it. And I'm sorry, this is so fucking cringe. You're going to want to die. Uh, do, uh, yeah. Let me just get that PowerPoint clip. Uh, let's get to the next slide here. Okay, next slide, please. Um, the host that year was David Spade. It didn't turn out too good for him. Kobe's having a rough year. You know what? Kobe, I don't know what happened there. You never know. You know, some girls are out to get celebrities. 2003. Might be his fault. But I thought about it and I realized, you know what? I'm not going to let this stop me from having sex with strangers. I'm not. I'm not going to let the bad guys win. <laughs> Whatever that means. All right, right now I'd like to bring out the next round of chicks. Here's the trophy girls for the night. The DOA girls from Extreme Beach Volleyball. Easy on the eyes. Nice! You get a good shot right here in the front. Come on, girls. They're going to help us celebrate the winners. They're going to give out these. Uh, this is the Spike Man. And this uh, kind of looks like uh, a Pac-Man and a Space Invader. What? Uh, take a crap? No, I had a baby. I was going to say, good Lord, jeez. The DOA girls, what's in the water here? All right. Well, you know what? Uh, thank Listen, I like hot girls as much as the next person, I swear. But mm -hmm. do you do you believe for a second that anybody here gives a fuck about video games? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Not a single fuck was given. Not a, they don't get they don't care. They don't give two shits about this thing that they're doing. Uh, this what's it look like? A space invader took a crap. Is that what he just said? I I I, bla I blacked out. And it's only going to get worse. This is a terrible. Now, okay, chat folks, people, if you look at this and go based return. Let's let's just have a bunch of half nude models on the stage handling. talking about how hot they are and who cares about the video games. I don't think I'm with you, but I mean, you're entitled to your opinion. I personally think that we should have the video game show be about video games. I I don't mind hot ladies; they're fine. It's just a weird thing to make the show about, and mm. it definitely it has nothing to do with video games. And and if you are a woman and you want to play games, there was nothing here for you. You know, yeah, I mean, unless that you is like, true. again, unless you like looking at other ladies, which is it's totally legit and fine and valid, but where's the video games? Where's the video games? Where's the video games? This is not for, this is not about that. This is just about stuff that had nothing to do with video games. And sometimes they would sometimes show a video game. Prince of Mads. And ad, well, this is an ad for... <laughs> this is the full broadcast. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your deodorant is? Next time, use new Power Stripe from Right Guard with a stripe of time release odor fighters no other deodorants got. Nothing oh, yeah, so. Like nothing works like it. Yes. Of course, they're, they're selling deodorants to the gamers. Yeah, <laughs> the no, stinky gamers. Look at that. The lovely Laura Croft is back. And once again, she's got no the Raider? So somebody asked about Laura Croft, so I've jumped to the Laura Croft part of the... Yeah, this part is going to make you cringe into a singular, and this is the worst part. Okay, the graphics were worse than I thought. Than the I graphics remembered. are worse than you remember, and this is not Tomb Raider 1. This is Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness, so it's a little bit a little bit later. <laughs> um, this is a, this is like a couple years after the first Tomb Raider. Uh, I want to say the first Tomb Raider is late 90s, and this is like 2003. Yeah, this is 2003. Um, Laura Croft is actually not a bad character. But the way she was marketed 
was so mm-hmm. bad that I but didn't she realize was she was kind of badass. Yeah, she was. I didn't realize she was a badass because of shit like this. Okay. I need to find a man. We know. To really enjoy this game, you've got to learn to make Lara do exactly what you want her to do. <laughs> Up the ladder, down the ladder. Up the ladder, down the ladder. Up the, down the ladder. The controls are tough to master, and it can get really frustrating. Stop frustrating me. So as a rule, be cool, fool. Press L2 to enter stealth mode. If you're near a wall, press X to wall hug. I love you all. And whenever possible, heed this delicious little tip. Unleash Lara's inner gymnast. It won't save your life, but it might make your afternoon. First, backflip onto a ledge. Now, pull yourself up into a handstand by pressing up on the left analog stick while holding L1, L2, R1, and R2. Wow, seamless finish, but will it be enough to impress the Russian judge? It is! She's done it! A new world record! Is there anything she can't do? Coming to the stage is the reason why... Now, before you continue, I'm going to continue just a little bit longer, but that is extremely cringe, right? <laughs> I, I mean, she's great at doing backflips, at least. I just, like, I just hate the lack of respect that little commercial has for anybody involved. Yeah. Well, what button do I push? What button do I push to make her crawl on the ground so I can yeah, see her I, at? I, I'm just, guys, <laughs> we're better than this. They, but the people who made video game shows for TV... I'm a guy with this ad is terrible. Thank you. Okay, so it's not just about, oh, she's too objectified. It's about how little respect that ad has for anybody. I'm going to continue just a little bit more. Many men owe thousands of dollars to their video store. All right, give it up right now. But- Who do you think the next celebrity guest is? Uh, Drew Barrymore. No, <laughs> interesting guest, though. Uh, Chat. There's no women on the Chat. show. Chat, does anybody know? It, it is a female guest. Who do you think the next oh. next guest is? Tom Green. That's a woman. Cameron Diaz. It's a woman who was involved with a video game. You're never going to guess. You're never going to guess. I have no clue now. Involved Jenna in a video Jameson. game? Jenna Jameson. Do you know who Jenna Jameson is? No. Porn star. Oh. Yeah. How was she involved in a video oh, game? Yeah. She had her own hentai game. Uh, she had, yeah, it's called Virtually Jenna. Oh. Yeah. What's up, people? You know, it was around this era. is a good thing, whether you're kicking ass Look, or just getting Jenna's some. great. She looks great. The I got nothing actress, against Jenna. The action it's the first be the game stud. involved the person girl, they've had the car, on my mm. waste the yeah. bad guy. Yeah, on your show. The show. Yeah. But of course, they picked the por- uh, porn act. Actress, actress are like, oh yeah, this Even intersects yep. perfectly. Yes, exactly. Clubs, con- so that kind of cracks me up because it's the first time they've had anybody on the stage that was involved with the game. Although, uh, later, in a later Game Awards, oh, she's making a, pulling a weird face there. In a later Game Awards, they did have Samuel L. Jackson host and he was in Grand Theft Auto. Hmm. I don't know if her game had come out yet when she was on the Game Awards. I may have to dig that up, but I have, I've played her game. So, was she... Was it a common practice to include celebrities in game by that point? Um, a little bit. Yeah. Like, I mean, it wasn't as common as it is today with voice acting. I Because there's just less voice acting in those older games in general. But mm. I like, for example, when they did FMVs. Oh, Tim Curry was in Gabriel Knight. He was a voice actor in Gabriel Knight in the 90s. Tim Curry. Oh, interesting. Uh, which, I mean, it's the whole reason for the game to exist, to be perfectly honest. It's cool as hell. Uh, uh, and he was also in Command and Conquer, which is he's hilarious in that. Um, and like Mark Hamill was in a game. They for a while there was the, all the FMV games where they actually had videos of the celebrities. So yeah, I would say celebrities in video games was has been a thing for a long time and okay off and on. So yeah, Tim Curry the goat exactly. Um, and, but yeah, Samuel L. Jackson's in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas as the as a uh, officer tenpenny data play though and night trap very good yeah night trap that's a that's a that's a deep cut so cycle awards like tv game awards um yeah that was what that was now you're already starting to see 
the conf the 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 way that video games and just male gaze titillation were starting to become like the same thing and why that kind of pissed some people off um in i'm going to skip ahead about 10 years now to 2012 we're going to talk about something that happened in 2012 which was this the infamous doritos pope interview Uh, this is the guy who ended up taking over the Game Awards. His name is Jeff Keighley. Jeff Keighley ended up taking over the Game Awards um, after a while and became the guy to run the Game Awards. You've probably seen him on stage before. He actually was involved with the Game Awards uh, as early as like 10 years before this, when he was a teenager. He was writing gags for the Game Awards and eventually just kind of took it over um, like bit by bit. So he was pretty deeply embedded in the whole Game Awards situation. Uh, I'm going to go back to the clip and I'm just going to play you a little clip from the the uh, interview that this is actually from, because, again, I think it's like pretty, it's pretty interesting stuff. Hang on, let me tab here. There's there's a couple spoilers on my other tabs. All right, this is... I'm assuming you played Halo 4. I have played Halo 4. You are correct. So do you think it is a good thing that game that food companies have started doing these things where they allow you to eat their product and go to the next level with their game or is yeah. that something you'd frown upon? Well, I, I look at it from a macro level in that, you know, for a long time, movies have always had all these promotional <laughs> partners um, tied to their releases. And I think games haven't. And, you know, one of the things that I've always believed in is that <laughs> games need to become even more mainstream. I mean, guys like you and I play them, but still, you know, the, the mass acceptance of how big gaming is is not fully appreciated. And one way, one conduit to sort of uh, reach that level of sort of attention is by brand partnerships. And Mountain Dew has, you know, had a, a long kind of standing partnership with the game industry, uh, stemming back to, I, th I think Halo 3 was the first thing back in 2007, where they had, you know, a big partnership um, with Microsoft around that. And you know what I love about this partnership and why I'm excited about it is that it's it, they're really adding value to the equation sure. in that you know gamers okay. actually get value out of this. So it's not just you know uh, you know uh, the, the a value logo being slapped money. on a bottle. It really <laughs> is you know a meaningful uh, partnership Checks where what? if you you know you buy Mountain Dew or you the buy Doritos, being we all you get paid, get and I got paid for sitting next to the, the Doritos. Website, like do XP, oh yeah, DoritosXP.com. You enter that code and link it to your gamer <laughs> tag, and you actually get experience in the game. Makes me want to eat chips, though. The gamer too. After this video launched, all hell broke loose. Yeah, so this is from another video. Um, I can link. I can link in my. Like, I always try to cite my sources. So when I upload this, I will upload it. But the Legend of the Doritos Pope. Uh, the Legend of the Doritos Pope. Uh, great video. Uh, entertaining shit. Uh, <laughs> so. He came under a lot of fire for like this. Uh, oops, I'm not ready for that tab yet. We'll get to that. We'll get to her. We'll get to her. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm not ready for that tab yet. He gave it to her a lot of fire for the uh, uh, selling out and trying to tie to the snack company. You know, uh, it's really, really, really silly. Thank you. Well, no, no problem. Have a good night. Thank you for stopping by. You enter a code to boost XP. So what Jeff has said in there is that the cooperation between the snack industry and video games had lasted since 2007 snacks are a big part of what uh, snacks are bigger in this than you think so the game he's advertising is halo 4 here nothing made me feel older than realizing halo 4 was 2012 what really that doritos pope stuff was 2012 holy crapola uh, while eating my Pac-Man cereal. Yeah, there was a Mario cereal, too. Um, 2000, Halo, Halo 4, 2012. Halo 4, under the auspice of 343 Studios director Bonnie Ross, a woman. <laughs> if you didn't know that. It was directed and coded by a lot of men, but there was definitely a woman involved. She's the, she was the head of 343 Studios up until, I think, 2022, she has finally stepped back from that job but she worked on many of the halo games including halo 4 which was her first major title so women again uh being girl bosses in the game industry uh as for halo mm -hmm. 4 i don't have any experience with it i've never played it i don't know what you're talking about actually i really 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 like halo 4 um 
And part of the reason I really like Halo 4 is because it provides lots of fuel for my Master Chief Cortana ship. So Halo 4 haters can suck it. Halo 4 is for the ladies. Girl game. Based. I didn't really play Halo 4. <laughs> that was one of the games I kind of skipped. A lot of people didn't like Halo 4. I think that uh, 2 is considered the most iconic. It had the best multiplayer oh, okay. for sure. Uh, 3 is also really, really solid. If I were to tell somebody where to start with the Halo series, I would probably say start with 3 because it's probably the most beginner friendly. But it's, it's Xbox 360 at this point, so I don't know how well the graphics age. Uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to be Cortana. That's another person I've cosplayed, by the way. I like Cortana a lot. <laughs> Painting yourself blue isn't that much fun, but no, don't worry. I wore a bodysuit. I wasn't naked. She does walk around naked. A lot of people complained that her design was sexist, and then one of the designers put his, put his foot in his mouth by saying some bullshit about, whoa, she's naked because it throws off her opponents to make them surprised that she's naked. Uh -oh. I hate that kind of BS. I think Cortana looks so good and so hot. Just say mm -hmm. you want to look at a pretty girl. It's fine. Just say you want to look at a pretty girl. Just be honest about it. Be like Yoko Taro, who designed 2B, and say, yeah, I just wanted to, like, have a girl with the hot ass, as opposed to Hideo <laughs> Kojima saying, oh, you'll regret Did your he say days. that? Yeah, well, Based. He, he basically said that. Yeah, he basically said I wanted to. Yeah, exactly. It was such a stupid thing to say about Cortana. Oh, she distracts people. It sets them off guard. She doesn't even fight. She's an assistant. She's a navigation assistant. Um, but yeah, we like to look at girls. It's fine. It's fine to have girls. To be because Yoko Taro looks pretty girls. Yeah, he just said I like to look at pretty girls, so I'm going to make a pretty girl, and I'm going to give her a short skirt because it's cool. And I feel like you should just be honest about your pretty girls in your games and not try to say some shit that puts your foot in your mouth and make you look even stupider. Because I have, uh, uh, as you can probably tell already, I have zero problem with hot girls in video games. I think they're awesome in their face. Mm-hmm. Now we're about to head into the last of my few slides here. Um, but before we go any further, this is the part where I want this to be more interactive because I've been lecturing a lot. I want to ask you something. Who's a gamer? What's a gamer? Uh, well, for me, it's just somebody who plays video games. I agree. But I think there is a distinction that was drawn a lot of times between gamers which is like anybody who plays games whatever and gamer as a slur to to be like uh you scummy pop culture guys who yeah or a gamer is somebody who takes video games. i i don't know if this is a this word is necessarily great me personally well i include anybody who games as i i think is a gamer but yeah i include mobile gamers but some people don't some people say that doesn't so this is not a very good distinction, okay. I feel, in a lot of ways. But I do identify as a gamer, because I've been gaming my whole life, and I like games. But I don't think we say this about other type of forms of media. I don't think we say, like, who's a TV watcher? You know? Like, who's a music listener? Nobody says that about... It's too broad of a category, right? But we say gamer. We do say gamer. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the word, and I feel like there's been a lot of debate about whether or not this is a this is a useful word. But I think we're I think it's here to stay. So we have to be careful when we say gamer, whether we mean gamer in the derogatory sense, like smelly, nasty gamers versus people who play video games and are cool and are fun to hang out with. I don't know. It's just a weird one, right? <sighs> I usually use it in like just to describe a video game player. Right. I know there's been this stigma in pop culture that associated gamers with somebody that's like stinky and, you know, eats a lot of chips and games all day, but I didn't realize it was used as an insult or slur or was considered that. Or it's not even an insult or it's just like a, like otaku. Yeah. Like people kind of reclaim or people are like, oh, I don't like mm -hmm. there's people that are like, oh, I hate gamers be because they are former gamers or whatever. There's just so much like going on there. Um, I just want to propose that like we've talked about chips and snack food and stuff like that. Snack food marketing has done more damage to our culture than you think. And this is where my thesis is. This is my thesis right here. You know what? You know what f started Gamergate? It was motherfucking what? Slim Jim. In 2012. 
This is my thesis. This is what I believe. I believe that this manosphere crap was mm -hmm. marketed to people over the last decade or so. It started, obviously, Spike TV was doing the manosphere crap. Um, and uncritically, people were reproducing. This is an article from the New York Times. It was posted extremely uncritical. Um, I'm going to continue. Um, talking about it but i'm gonna play these commercials for slim jim i don't have the one they're talking about in this article but i do have some others that are very similar and i'm gonna play them again they're super super cringe i'm sorry but uh let's actually go to the commercials first and then i'll then i'll pick pick up the slide these are super cringe these actually like won awards and stuff though like they were um powerpoint powerpoint off screen on okay these were actually like a big deal, I don't know. You got a co-ed baby shower in progress? We're on it. Get those new snap sticks! You're in a co-ed baby shower, you're strapped into a baby holster, and it's cutting off the flow of your manliness. Stay with us. Breathe it in. God, how did his grace go? Slim Jim snap sticks, made from stuff guys need. The most cutting effective cure for male spice well. loss is new Slim Jim dare sticks. <laughs> New Slim Jim Dare with three levels of heat. Made his crime stuff, was being behind need. the woman on the motorcycle. That was his crime. What happened? You ordered just a salad for lunch. Just a salad? Just a salad. Aw, oh, idiot! We administered this new Dare stick to counteract the lettuce. A <laughs> salad. New Slim idiot. Jim Dare with three I'm levels of heat. Made reactions. from stuff guys need. That's okay. These commercials were, yeah, guys, is it guys, is it unmanly to sit behind a woman where I can touch her boobies? I don't know. I, I don't know if that's manly. I think that's get. You do be, uh, what? I don't have the one for the gaming here, but I will link. I will talk about what the article said about these ads because this was their. This is what they were doing. This was this was their whole touching a woman, kind of gay. Not gonna lie, it's kind of yeah, ha, fellas. Is it gay to blah blah blah? Uh, this this whole like fragile riddle. I'm not manly enough. Like. Thing, please nobody believe that you have to fall for that. That was all lies. It was all made up. Somebody invented that to sell you Slim Jims and Doritos and other shit that they were trying to sell you. And people like buy into this. Like people buy into this like really hard gender norms where like everything is too gay and you're losing your spice because like, fellas, is it gay to reproduce with a woman and have her and have her carry your child? Like they're literally like you were at a baby shower. Yeah, I, he's got he's got a baby holster on. Like what the what the hell? Like he, I, but this is in the article. It's legitimately there. Their whole master plan was because after a certain age, when men marry, reproduce, and hit life goals, um, and become like more adult, they stop buying this kind of food. They stop buying snack food. They stop buying certain products that are geared toward younger unmarried men and they start buying family stuff instead. And these I companies, see that. yeah. And these companies wanted to increase their demographics by attracting older and older men to continue to buy the product. Because remember, we have to continue to grow um, our product and continue to sell to more people. So mm -hmm. as you grow out of these life milestones, they weren't buying Grow snack food anymore. Does that make sense? Yes. So what yeah, they you wanna, did? You, you're an adult. You don't. You don't eat chips every day. So what they did was they partnered with video games, claimed that video games were for again boys, not men. What they really believed was that the men playing video games didn't want to grow up and had arrested development, which isn't true. You can be a fucking adult and play video games, but that was what their belief was. <laughs> So their belief was if we keep you playing video games and also make all the other markers of grown up adulthood seem cringe and ruin your manhood and make you gay, you'll continue to buy our bullshit. Oh. <laughs> now, I eat junk food. I like junk food. There is definitely a stigma. And I don't know if anybody's ever put these pieces together the way I have. But when I read this article, it was like a like a light went off like, oh, they don't want men to grow up. So they're going to they're going to claim video games aren't for grownups, which was if you go back to the 80s, video games were only for grownups. 
So we have just regressed super, super hard <laughs> in our cultural understanding of what video games are. So Slim Jims are responsible. Commercials like this, I do believe, have a very big impact on what people believe as manhood and therefore like people hitting those life milestones. Yeah, I, I have a strong feeling that this is actually more powerful, this kind of marketing. And the way they like, very, it's, it's sexist against men and women. Yes, exactly. I feel like um, we never really understood gamers. Well, that brings us to 2014. Hmm. This is my last slide because we're not going to do slides for this next part. We're just going to talk. Okay. Do, do, do you know what my slide is? A dumpster on fire. <laughs> no, I don't know what happens in 2014. <gasps> this is so cool. I'm so glad I could to educate you on this. Um, by the way, okay. if I do this VOD, I might cut this VOD in two pieces. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because this is the part where we're going to watch a lot more videos and do a lot less slides. Uh, but I'm not saying it. You're gonna let me surprise her. 2014. Oh, is, is it Gamergate? Gamergate. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's yeah, yeah. Gamergate. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I don't have a, I don't have any slides for Gamergate. I do have some videos to show, but I'd like to just switch to a little chat here. Rima, what do you think mm -hmm. Gamergate is? It was a, was it a protest? Something about wanting more women's and women dev in video game, and then some people got harassed. That's all I know about it, kind of. That's that's a good that's like a good adjacent summary. That's definitely part okay. of it. Um, what the f is the cosplay on my throne? It's just a sexy cosplay. You can buy it if you want. Somebody, <laughs> somebody suggested I put it on there. Actually, the next actual cosplay I'm gonna do is Oro Crony. Because I can't. Oh, do, nice. Because I can't do Pomu anymore because she graduated. I was dressed up as Pomu at MAGFest, and it was the day of her graduation. People were, like, giving me flowers and stuff. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, somebody was like, I thought you died. I was like, well, I had this cosplay already, and I didn't know she was graduating, because I've worn that cosplay, like, five times. So it was like, well, I guess I'm going to change up. So I was talking to some people there, and they, they said, uh, they said uh, well, we'll try, we'll try a different VTuber, so I'm going to do Crony next year. I got I to gotta get in shape, though. Do I have a pick somewhere? Um, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'll find one for y'all later. I think there was one on my MAGFest recap, but it was just my face and I had a mask on, so. <laughs> um, I love I love cosplay. What was I saying? Oh, we were talking about um, Gamergate. Protest. The, so ugly. The whole thing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I think there's a lot of people that... Back when this was going on, mm -hmm. I'm very moderate and neutral in my approach. And it was very hard to be moderate and neutral and look at both sides because the minute you would say like, well, so-and-so made up a point or oh, I think so-and-so was wrong, then all of a sudden you are on one side of an argument debate that was <laughs> like so incredibly toxic and involved so many people getting so super, super, super mad that you really had to pick the side. And I didn't, uh, and, I, and, I, and I personally have had a hard time talking about Gamergate because like I was such a gamer, have always been a huge gamer my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I did feel that like, there were some, there were some things that I didn't agree with that I wasn't really saying anything about because I couldn't. Yeah. I feel like it's like that for, a lot of uh, divisive topics lately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You gotta pick a side, right? And everything yeah. becomes like a culture war. So what surprised yeah. me was like, okay, obviously here at Countess Lita's Shay, Shay Lita, we are big fans of Doki Bird and all of the stuff surrounding her that just it was not fair to her because she's a big gamer. I love her. She's awesome. I did not know that like that was a political stance per se. And some of the people that are like also anti DG Sanji are coming from 4chan and they have different political views that also are aligned with more like with a gamer gator point of view versus like a non gamer gator point of view. And so I'm just going to say this like as a general statement, don't harass people on the internet. Do not harass people on the internet. I mean, what, what all I know about and the other thing I know about Gamergate is that the way they harassed uh, some people was almost like cyber terrorism. 
uh, she she was receiving mails and stuff. But then some other people told me that uh, they were kind of on the other side where they were just basically saying that not she deserved it, but the Gamergate movement was not totally in the wrong. Yeah. And one of the reasons that I want to talk about it is mm-hmm. because... I don't want to do like, I don't want to say like good people on both sides. What I'm going to say here is is instead this. Gamergate started because of this weird marketing thing where they made it into a men versus women thing and it didn't have to be a men versus women thing, but they decided that that was how they were going to position video games in the culture, right? And then there were a lot of women that didn't like stuff like that Laura Cropcliffe I just showed you, where at the time it was pretty fucking over the top. And yet they couldn't separate that from their understanding of video games can be better than this because they hadn't been exposed to all the good, good stuff that I showed you, you know, that was made by women, that was championed by women. They only saw, like, the stuff that was kind of cringe. Yeah. And when they saw that, they thought, oh, we need to fix video games. But video games weren't broken. Video game marketing was broken. And, Uh yeah, there was a lot of men that were involved in video game development um certainly there was sexist men not everybody was perfect but there's a lot of good people doing their best as well and i think people felt very attacked by people coming in and going uh maybe we should do better at this maybe yeah exactly it just felt like the people um pioneering for the gender inclusivity didn't really understand gaming in the first place right and so that was kind of a disappointment because it could have been uh, done right, but it kind of wasn't. So then it missed the plot. The women versus men thing came after Game Dread and Corrosive Scandals. No, that's not true. Because Anita Sarkeesian, which we're about to start talking mm. about. Um, let's go back to my slides real quick here. Oops, that's the wrong thing. That's somebody's, that's, that's your Fugi, actually. Um... Anita Sarkeesian, I do have a picture of her. I'm sorry, but this is another thing that made me cringe, so I have to show. Oh, that's left. That's showing left display, so it's up already. Next slide, please. Anita Sarkeesian shown here um, get throwing herself a wedding-themed birthday party. I- <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, 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 sorry, I couldn't resist. Somebody else in chat had already seen it. <laughs> Listen, oh, I, I'm sorry, y'all are in ads. Listen, it's easy to dunk on Anita Sarkeesian, so let's go ahead and do it. Mario. Uh, Anita Sarkeesian was is a feminist critic who made YouTube videos. Um, she made YouTube videos pr- and a podcast. Prior to doing her, um, yeah, you guys, I thought I turned the ads down, but we'll wait. We'll talk about this in a little bit as soon as you guys, yeah. Um, I thought I turned them down. Maybe it didn't save. I don't know. I tried to turn it down to bottom, but on bare odds, but you will get some ads. She made a podcast and a video series about tropes versus women. She started out talking about movies. At some point, she wanted to expand her uh, enterprise to video games, and she wanted to do a tropes versus women in video games. So that's when she did a Kickstarter to support her tropes versus women in video games thing, which was, I would like to say, in 2012, about the same time, maybe 2013. It was right after the... uh, it was before the actual Gamergate like blow up thing that happened um, and she was raising money for this Kickstarter. These videos were okay. actually released around that time, like in 2014, which is why we're talking about them as a 2014 thing. The 2014 thing like is the Gamer- Gamergate. I would like to and I want to get your honest reaction about some of these videos because I watched these when they first came out and I remember thinking that the first couple were all right. And then I liked them less and less and less the more of them that I watched. Um, and it's because... I'll just prime you for this. 
a lot of her video game footage is not her actual video game footage. Like she kind of got it from other gamers and just didn't credit them, which is not cool. And <laughs> also, she doesn't really have a lot to say, in my opinion. She basically just says the same couple things over and over and over again. But also, I think that many rebuttals of her work of at the time were really weak. And the biggest thing is that she was harassed a lot for doing this work. Sorry, I just I was uh -huh. stalling a little bit for waiting for the ads to run out. You're back. You're back from ads. Hopefully, you're back from ad jail. Again, I, I I don't I thought I turned them off, but it's just Twitch is being weird and showing people ads. Um, yeah, she she hadn't really played a lot of the games that she was reviewing, and she did research, but it was very surface level a lot of the time. So I'm just going to just like play this video and a couple of them. Reba, how much time do you have uh, tonight? Because there's a lot of these videos. I'm only going to play a couple of them, but I want to react to them. I have not seen these videos in 10 years, and I'm assuming you've never seen them. Join me and no, probably not. Okay. I mean, I still have like uh, 45 minutes left. Thank you so much for the subs, by the way. Well, by the way, thank you for being on the show. This is a 20 minute video. This is her first video. Oh, okay. Um, and we'll watch this one and then we'll talk then I'll talk about the rest of Gamergate since you have 45 okay. minutes and I don't want to like but Yeah, sorry, yeah, I have, I have yeah. work early tomorrow. Oh, that's okay, it's totally fine. By the way, I loved having you here. Um I really yeah, want to hear no, for you as well. It's been super insightful, honestly. I I'm and I I don't even mind just listening. So no. it, it's I not... think your community has been wonderful and I always love how much Aww. research you do for all of your videos. And I just wanted to be that same person like I always do research for what I'm talking about, uh, but I feel you in on the drama. We're going to watch at least the first part of the first video. Yeah, which I this think is, is totally, okay. well, it's not totally new to me because I watched some stuff on it. But again, like I told you, I was like, I didn't understand anything. I was like, I need to dig more into it. So it's just nice to have somebody do all the research for me and then tell it to me in a very digestible way. So I, I really appreciate that so far. Like I've, I'm really in appreciating everything you're, you're saying there's also a super long gamergate explainer video that was just posted it's like a six hour video i've watched some of it and it's okay. it's actually really six balanced hours. and good it's super long though but it's really balanced <laughs> because it not only talks about like the harassment stuff which is people yeah. did harass these ladies online but also like why people didn't like them um, mm -hmm. which so it shows I, both sides. Yeah, it kind of shows both sides. Yeah, because it shows a little bit about both sides of why people don't like them. So here's Anita. Um... So that's the one that started it all. She started it. She was the first person to decide that I'm going to come in and like review video games from this feminist point of view. Now, she had already done this for movies. She used the word feminist. It's yes. like already uh, G. <laughs> Oh, and another thing to point out that I think a lot of people don't really realize is that Feminist Frequency, her company, to our she was the face of it, but she had employees. And representations a lot of these were written, a lot of people know this, but they, these were written by her boyfriend at the time. Devices, and patterns most commonly associated with women in gaming, Oh shit, I have to listen to it on stream. Oh, right. This series will include critical analysis of many beloved games captioning? and characters. There we go. We have closed captioning. But remember that it's both possible and even necessary to simultaneously enjoy media while also being critical of its more problematic or pernicious aspects. So, without further ado, let's jump right into the damsel in distress. Yeah, she's already. Yeah. Well, let's start with feminism the story of the is game fine. No one By ever itself, got to play. feminism is fine. Back in 1999, game developer Rare was hard at work on a new original title for the Nintendo 64 called Dinosaur Planet. The game was to star a 16 year old hero named Crystal as one of two playable protagonists. I don't know why she, she chose to start with, with this. Through time, mm. Fighting prehistoric monsters with her it just, it was a weird choice. And saving the world. She was strong, she was capable, and she was heroic. And who might you be, animal girl? My name is Crystal! What's wrong with Crystal? Fine. Nothing wrong with Crystal, I don't think. I think Anita's okay with Crystal. Um, Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Well, it would have been. Okay. If the game never got released. As development yeah, on Star the Fox Oh, it never got released. Legendary game designer Shigeru Miyamoto joked about how he thought it should be the third installment in his Star Fox franchise instead. Over the next two years, he and Nintendo did just that. Yeah, Star they Fox Adventures. They rewrote and redesigned the game and released it as Star Fox Adventures for the GameCube in 2002. 
In this revamped version, the would-be protagonist, Crystal, has been transformed into a damsel in distress and spends the vast majority of the game trapped inside a crystal prison, waiting to be rescued by the new hero, Fox McCloud. The in-game action sequences that were originally built for Crystal were converted to feature Fox instead. Crystal is given a skimpier, more sexualized outfit. Wow, she's beautiful. <laughs> To Princess Leia outfit. Yeah. Listen. What am I doing? A lot of people like Crystal. And I don't yes, that know. is cheesy saxophone music playing to make sure it's crystal clear that she it's is now in. an object yeah. of mm -hmm. desire, even while in suspended animation. To add insult to injury, Fox is now using her magical staff to fight his way through the game to save her. The tale of how Crystal went from protagonist of her own epic adventure to the passive victim in someone else's game illustrates how the damsel in distress trope disempowers female characters and robs them of the chance to be heroes in their own right. I'm going to pause it right there for a second. Mm. I don't think there's anything wrong with this observation. Yeah, I, I is... why did you say that you're... No. You're confused why she started there. Do you think there would have been a better starting point or a better example? It, it's a very obscure, like, little factoid about games. Mm. But eventually she goes into, you know, what we talked about earlier. Of course, Tomb Raider and stuff. Predates the invention of video games Tomb Raider has to be there. Years. The trope can be traced back to ancient Greek mythology with the tale of Perseus. According to the myth, Andromeda is about to be devoured by a sea monster after being chained naked to a rock as human sacrifice. Perseus slays the beast, rescues the princess, and then claims her as his wife. In the Middle Ages, the damsel in distress was a common feature in many medieval songs, legends, and fairy tales. The saving of a defenseless woman was often portrayed as the raison d'etre, or reason for existence, Ooh, fancy in romance words. tales fancy and words. poems of the era involving a knight errant, the wandering knight adventuring to prove his chivalry, prowess, and virtue. At the turn of the 20th century, victimized young women became the cliché of choice for the nascent American film industry, as it provided an easy and sensational plot device for the silver screen. A famous like early the example King Kong, is the 1913 damsel in distress exactly. short, Barney Oldfield Race for a Life, mm. which features the now iconic scene right? of a woman being tied to the railroad tracks by an evil mustache twirling villain. Around the same time, the motif of a giant monkey carrying away a screaming woman began to gain widespread popularity in media of all kinds. Notably, Tarzan's love interest, Jane, is captured by a brutish primate in Edgar Rice Burroughs' 1912 pulp adventure, Tarzan and the Apes. In 1930, Walt Disney used this meme in an early Mickey Mouse cartoon called The Gorilla Mystery. The imagery was even exploited by the U.S. military in this recruitment poster for World War I. But it was in 1933 that two things happened, which 50 years later would set the stage for the damsel in distress trope to become a foundational element in video games as a medium. First, Paramount Pictures so we talked introduced about how their Popeye animated series Popeye oh, the Sailor to cinema audiences. The inspiration for Donkey Kong. The formula for most yeah, shows yeah. would involve Popeye rescuing a kidnapped olive oil. Second, in March of that year, RKO Pictures releases its groundbreaking hit film, King Kong in which a giant ape abducts a young woman and is eventually killed while trying to keep possession of her. You old now? Because this was 10 Fast years ago? Fast forward to 1981. That was one of the Japanese most expensive movies Nintendo made at that time. Entrusted a young Definitely. designer named Shigeru Miyamoto with the task of creating a new arcade game for the American market. Originally, the project was conceived of as a game starring Popeye the Sailor. But when Nintendo wasn't able to secure the rights, Miyamoto created his own characters to fill the void heavily influenced by the movie King Kong. That's slightly wrong. They did have the rights and they were prototyping it. They just thought the okay. graphics The game's hero Man was tasked with rescuing a damsel named The Lady after she's carried off by a oh, giant Oh, Mario. And later there he is. Oh, so Donkey man. Kong was the Let's bad guy. Man. Then he becomes, yeah. a, he becomes the protagonist. Although Donkey Kong is perhaps mm -hmm. the most famous early arcade game to feature the damsel in distress, it wasn't the first time Miyamoto employed the trope. So she wasn't earlier, Peach yet. A hand in no, that's, a um, that's actually game. Pauline, Mario's older girlfriend mm. from New York. Uh, she later becomes mayor in uh, the later Mario games. Okay. She's the mayor of, this, of New Dock City. So they broke nice. up, but she's, but she's still thriving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hand in designing a 1979 arcade game called Sheriff. 
In it, a vague female-shaped collection of pixels, referred to as the beauty, must be rescued from a pack of bandits. The hero is then rewarded with a smooch of victory for his bravery in the end. A few years later, Miyamoto recycled his Donkey Kong character designs. Pauline became the template for a new damsel named Princess Toadstool, and Jumpman became a certain very famous plumber. Mario. Me, Mario. <laughs> Peach. is iconic. I She's love Peach iconic. So much. Oh yeah, Peach me too. Is in many ways, the quintessential stock character version of the damsel in distress. The they just released a new Peach game. In 14 I need it so bad. Oh, yeah? Mario yeah, like she's, like, she's like the protagonist she's of it. It's super cute. Them. She does uh, different outf outfits. She has like cosplays. Mm -hmm. It's like a Peach cosplay game. Super, oh, I love cute. that. The North Wait, American release I can't wait to of get Super it. Mario so Brothers cute. 2 in 1988 remains the only game in the core series in which Peach is not kidnapped. Bullshit, and also not the true. only game in which but she's maybe a it was true at the time, I don't know. Though it should be noted, it wasn't originally created it was to be a Mario game at all. The game was originally released in Japan under a completely different title called Yumi Kojo Doki Doki Panic, which roughly translates to Dream Factory Heart Pounding Panic. You ever Princess Peach was out at the time? Yeah, there were other games where Peach was the protagonist. It's not a, it's not a mainline Mario game, but there have been later okay. ones where she's been playable now. Nintendo yeah. of America thought that the original Japanese release of Super Mario Bros. 2 was too difficult I think and too similar to the of first game. Released, so they reskinned and redesigned Doki Doki Panic to star Mario yeah, and the Luigi recent one doesn't count. This is an old video. However, the Japanese game came already had four playable characters. That's such a good game. It is such The a designers game. opted Classic. to include Toad and the Princess to fill the two remaining slots, building directly Toad. on top of the pre-existing character models. So really, if we're honest, Peach is kind of accidentally playable in this one. Still, she had the awesome ability to float. Wait, why accidentally playable? Really handy, well, because they needed the to have a fourth character, so they just oh, to throw sadly, her in Peach there. has never been a playable character again. I always in the main picked franchise. her. Oh yeah, because she can newer float. newer games that feature four player yeah. options, like the new Super yeah, Mario Brothers based. Wii and Wii U, the princess is still excluded from the action. She's been replaced yeah, with another and these ones you can't instead, play as, the princess, so as that's to allow valid. Nintendo to force her that's back lame. into the damsel role again and again. But you can play Peach as her does, in Mario course, RPG. appear in many spin-offs, such as the Mario Party, Mario yeah. Sports, and Mario Kart series, as well as the Super Smash Bros. Nintendo Universe crossover fighting games. However, mm -hmm. all of these oh, yeah, Peach fall a well good outside of the core that. Super Mario Spontaneously emerged out of the years and ones. So, yeah, we accidentally made a video She is the star of only one adventure, and there we'll we get go. to that a little later. One way to think about damseled characters is via what's called the subject-object dichotomy. In the simplest- So now she talks about, like, female objectification via being in the games. So she has three videos about the damsel in distress trip. Not okay. just one, but three. She talks about it for a super long time. So she and never talks about when the, like, in the case of Lara Croft, when the character is the protagonist? Um, eventually. But she's really, really down on most of these things. Like, here's what she has to say about Ms. Pac Man. Don't you know? Okay. I'm more than Pac Man with a bow. Was this 2014? It was, yeah, 2014. These came out in 2014. The Kickstarter was 2012, which is why I said the Men vs. Women thing started before 2014. So her other trope is when. The male character is the default, the and then there's also a female character. Mm -hmm. And again, that's a that's a fine enough observation, pretty surface level. Like the Final Fantasy kind of package? Well, not even Final Fantasy, because in Final Fantasy, the female characters are pretty well-developed, uh, pretty story-based characters. Um, but they're always kind of in danger. Not really. I mean, sometimes, but other times they're the oh, protagonist. Okay. Like, if you look at Final Fantasy VI, that's a woman who's the lead of that oh, game. Oh, yeah, okay. Game. I'm kind of just thinking of ten, mm -hmm. But yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then Final Fantasy IV, which was two in America, had Rosa, who sometimes was kidnapped, but other times boys were also kidnapped, so it's kind of pretty oh, okay. equal. Like, like, honestly, the person you rescue from stuff the most is probably Kane, who's the male character. Yeah, so there's so kind of like, not, they're not really like all damsels in distress kind of characters. Mm. Um, so what people mostly 
You've watched a, a bit of that video. I'm not going to watch the entire video. I might react to watch okay. all the videos at some point in the future. But what... Uh, my observation is this. The video's, like, fine. It's kind of boring. It's pretty basic. It's nothing I didn't know, but, like... Eh. I don't understand why people are so mad about it. She's just cherry-picking examples that suit her point, and for some reason people got fucking enraged. It's just, eh, she's kind of mid. Here's what I really, really didn't like. When she, can, when she tries to come up with a positive female character in video games, she fires complete blanks. She has nothing nice to say about video game characters, really. No her, one? Her best example of, like, her favorite female video game character of all time is in a game where you can't really tell the character is female. They just kind of use she, her pronouns for it, and it's not a character that anybody's really familiar with. Oh. So... That's a little bit, yeah. And and her positive, her videos that are about positive stuff are super short. Pixelated adventure game Sword and Sorcery is a brave adventurer known only as the Scythian, and the so game she really started off on YouTube. Uh huh. She was a YouTube person. This now, is her thing quest on YouTube. to collect pieces of a magical triangular artifact sounds familiar. That's no accident. Sword and Sorcery's Trigon is a clear reference to the Triforce of the Legend of Zelda games. And Link's recurring quest to collect pieces of the Triforce is perhaps the most famous heroic quest in the history of fantasy adventure games. By drawing on familiar gaming icons and conventions and that Zelda. many of us already associate with legendary quests and timeless adventures, Sword and Sorcery quietly I think asserts these that women can fill the role of mythic hero yeah. as effectively as men can. I don't think there's anything to get that pissed off about. But. Like I said, it's clear she doesn't have very much that's nice to say. She get on for she has three videos about damsels in distress, and then this short seven-minute video. She has another one about Jade from Beyond Good and Evil that talks about what she thinks is positive female representation. Mm. And she didn't talk about games people were like super familiar with as the positive games. And this kind of made people like super super annoyed because there's lots of positive examples of women in games. Mm -hmm. But fact, her problem is, so low in our and is generally, she doesn't like it when the games have hot characters that look pretty in them. I hate that because yeah. I actually hate playing games where there's no characters that are pretty in them. Right. So that's the and thing I don't understand why people would people, do that. I, why would you just not like have? Pre she doesn't like it when the girls are pretty. It's it's very clear. Like when you watch her whole thing. Like, that she just kind of is really bothered by the sexualization of women, even when it's kind of mutual, and when we enjoy it, and when we think it's fun, and when we want to play as those characters because we find them, like, sort of aspirational. Like, I, I don't know what she would think of you and me wearing these VTuber avatars. Yeah, I'd exactly. Love to, I'd love to know what her opinion but is. But I think it's wrong to associate, like, the male gaze with uh, anything that looks pretty female-wise. Like, women I love beautiful stuff. Like, uh, the the best example of, like, the female gaze I'm thinking about is, like, Korean K-pop groups, and they all look very feminine. Or, right. Or, like, anime characters. So. We like to look at pretty people. I think it's pretty universal yeah. that we think pretty people look cool. So uh -huh. I don't think you should paint an entire, oh, everything that looks attractive is sexist. It just seems uh -huh. like such a weird point to take. She does dunk on Samus. She doesn't like Samus because Samus gets naked at the end of the game as a reward for the male player. But like, no, she doesn't really. She gets naked at the end of the game to show she's a woman and also because she's a fucking badass. Like, like we didn't... Like, I really, really, this game looks cool. I mean, this game does look cool. I have nothing against sword and sorcery. I, I think it's totally interesting. But yeah, like, the female gaze does exist. And in fact, I'm doing a whole video about Xenoblade Chronicles, which is Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which is a game that got really smacked on for having too much male gaze. And I completely okay. disagree. I completely disagree. The game is absolutely using the female gaze as much as the male gaze and has beautiful women in it doing cool shit. But I think that the idea of beautiful women doing cool shit is something that people like get, seems like it's a lot of flack, which is silly, which is ridiculous because it's very feminist. But I don't think you would ever look at that and say it's feminist unless you'd actually played all the way through it and you realize it's a feminist game. That so kind of reminds me of um, uh, the Disney scriptwriter when they were writing all those uh, those OG movies like Belle and all of that and. The writer said that she kind of hid her plan, you know, from the, the directors. But 
like people are trying to make these Disney movies work, but the thing that they don't understand is that they were already very like female oriented and progressive. Like it's all these heroines that are independent and are trying to save their father and things like that. Exactly. And all these games that have female characters that like, well, they're attractive and they're, I'm going to move a little bit away so we can see each other. Uh, we're sitting next to the arcade now. <laughs> Um, they're like attractive characters and they're cute and then they happen to fall in love with the boy and like now mm-hmm. we can't do that anymore because that would kind of like I don't know eliminate their so we haven't had as much romance in those their movies. empowerment yeah, yeah and we also haven't had as much villains because villains like do problematic stuff and we don't want to want to see a villain do a bad thing and if yeah, that movie- sucks because the yeah. Disney villains are actually iconic and there were also right. huge um, like uh, LGBT icon or even drag icons and now we're completely erasing them right we aren't doing those anymore because it's Mm -hmm. too exactly it's just like too volatile you can't have a villain do a bad thing in a thing yeah like as as if media representing something means oh yeah exactly people would think it's problematic but i i i also disagree with that the whole thing about that we cannot have uh, villains anymore because What's interesting about them is that they do bad things and we know they do bad things. You know, it, that, that doesn't mean uh, it's an example that's being set. The interesting part is uh, having that kind of character. It gives us like an exciting person to maybe not root for, but like feel like a. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah. I was rooting for Maleficent the whole time. Right. Yeah. You can, you can put yourself <laughs> yeah. in their shoes and be like, oh, I don't know. She's kind of a badass. Right. <laughs> So the first controversy that happened with Gamergate was this Kickstarter. Um, The second controversy, which I will briefly talk about just so that you know that you're armed with data, was that there was another indie game developer named Zoe Quinn, who, by Mm. the way, they they do use they, them pronouns now, but not at the time. Mm. At the time, she, her, um, who made a very basic text adventure game with very minimal graphics called Depression Quest. And people got really, really mad about her wanting to put it on Steam because it was such a minimal, basic game with like, like it was there was not much to it. Yeah, like um, it's it was yeah. a bad game, but she wanted it on there. Like she's forcing the uh, how do you call that? Like the diversification, right? So she quota. basically like had a lot of friends who were game journalists and sort of talk to people about how she wanted to put this game on Steam. But I do want to say this, like, in in their defense. Um, It was a free game. She was never going to charge money for it. So who cares? Yeah, who cares? I mean, there's a <laughs> there's a million games on yeah, Steam. Yeah, like there's, there's Steam games that never see the... shovelware. Anyway, yeah. exactly. Steam has a lot of garbage shovelware. Who cares about putting one other piece exactly. of you don't really care about on Steam? But she developed a series of steam was different back then green you had to go through steam Greenlight to get an indie game on steam so you did have to network and politic a little bit to get an indie game on steam which is now it's a lot easier because mm. yeah it was a, a lot less accessible so that was kind of controversial but on the other thing it's like mm, who who yeah I, I, okay whatever she's giving it away for free uh whatever um it would have gone away probably, and we never would know about this unless, except for the fact that people on the internet got super mad and decided to do like big harassment campaigns and decide to like make problems for other people that were involved in this. So there was my... like some cheating allegations, mm-hmm. wasn't there? Well, mm-hmm. yeah, like it got view... personal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly, it got personal. That's a good way of putting it. It, it, it was a it was like a networking like somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody was able to get their silly little game promoted you know um and it didn't help matters that she was dating somebody who worked for kotaku okay um, which was you know video game journalism mm-hmm. so and she dated him very briefly as far as i understand and also he never reviewed her game that was a myth he never reviewed the game um, but just the fact that there was like that little bit of c- conflict of interest got a lot of people go, well, game journalists have conflict of interest and maybe they should like, report better about who they have a conflict of interest about. And that is actually a, one of the things that I think is a fair point, right? Like if you have a conflict of interest, you should probably report that you have a conflict of interest. 
Yeah. Uh, the problem was that that even though he should have reported that, it it did not exist at the time that her game came out. Like they were dating after the fact. So it was kind of like one of those weird And he days. didn't review the game, so No, he didn't review the doesn't game. Doesn't matter. But she got a lot of harassment anyway because her ex boyfriend made a real made a huge burn post about how toxic their relationship had been or something and basically yeah. neither, neither, neither of them came out looking very good because of this burn post that he made originally he posted it i think it was the penny arcade forums that he originally posted it to but it just got deleted so he tried to make it fly on something awful and it got deleted again so then he posted it on like an independent blog that you can go read to this date where it's still up and it's just a lot of relationship drama like, they talk about it for a super long time. Like, he shed, she shed kind of stuff. Who cares? I don't understand. It's right. always like this lately, isn't it? It's uh, one relationship sucked, so I'm going to go tell everybody about it. Like, it's... But I every relationship ends because it sucks somehow, so... Right. I would say that the, the, like, the VTuber relationship situations have been almost more explosive and toxic than this particular post, but, I mean... People had a nasty breakup and they decided to make a post about it on the internet and then that just turned into this whole firestorm of people getting really, really mad about video games. Um, so they use that the the other other thing though is that it's that there is I could see how there is some misogyny mm -hmm. in the gaming industry. I mean, as a woman, you kind of walk into a room full of men, you're expected to blend in and kind of put yourself second so you become one of them to become accepted and uh, that's kind of just something that you learn to do very early on or you get made fun of and yeah, even taking of, things seriously on the internet you get memed on you kind so. of try to be the cool girl right like yes, i don't want to exactly. be the one who's offended by something easily i don't want to be offended yep. so i'm just gonna like be cool even if something does kind of piss me off a little bit mm -hmm, and exactly you have to sort of have a big shield against stuff like if you would go to E3 and get mistaken for a booth babe or, you know, stuff like that, because, no, I'm actually a developer. Oh, OK, I'm sorry. You know, like that kind of shit would just happen because you were a woman in the space where they didn't expect to see a woman. Um, YouTubers don't talk about the relationship. Generally. They'd be more. Yeah, exactly. There would be a lot more. Uh, people try to keep their private lives more private. And I think. If somebody writes a big burn post about you behaving badly during a breakup, I just I don't know if that should be dragged all over the damn internet. Even if they both people were in the wrong or one person was in the wrong, it just feels like gossip, you know? The thing is, it's extremely um, powerful on the internet because I, I have this theory where it's going to sound a little r harsh, mm -hmm. though. Um, I feel like all these cases like Amber Heard and Johnny Depp and, you know, probably the case of that girl too, or even when we talk about VTubers like uh, Fruit, um, there's a lot of misogyny involved. They, these girls are ju judged more harshly for their past relationship than somebody does by scamming their viewers, committing a real crime. Like the upset is more there than when people actually commit like really bad um, stuff. And I think that's because a lot of those guys, they're more relatable to them. You know, the girls, they remind them of that girl in high school that rejected them or they feel like um, they can relate to the guy or they, they got, you know, into a bad relationship and ended bad or they got cheated on. So whenever there's these cheating allegations going off, they feel like it's happening to them. So there's like there's a lot of hurt involved. <laughs> you got the trash can emote. Now, nope. Pbox made a point in the chat. Like, that's... Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. That's my trash emote. Um, he makes a point that that's kind of shit coming from the premise that there's plenty of video women involved in playing video games and creating video games. Well, there was lots of women involved in creating video games. And there still are a lot of women involved in creating video games. But the point I made by showing all that stuff from the 80s and 90s and about it being more balanced before it started to drift more toward the Spike TV crowd is that it wasn't that there weren't women making games. Oh, <laughs> it's Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> this is giving me like some flashbacks. It's Oscar the Grouch Christmas special. 
That's not Sesame Street. Yes, it's Sesame Street. Oh, okay. It's it's Sesame Street. He got kicked down two flights of stairs. <laughs> okay, I gotta turn that down. It's way too frequent now. <laughs> don't usually don't usually do that many. I'm a, 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 oh wait. Oh god. Oh, well, how's the how does this button work? Okay, never mind. I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Um. <laughs> Yeah, he gets kicked down two flights of stairs and out the and out the door. And I just think that that's really funny. And I guess I never put a cool down on the trash thing. So <laughs> let's put a cool down on the trash things. Actually have that many people throwing Oscar down the stairs the whole time we talk. <laughs> I use Poor that for Oscar. when I die. Poor Oscar. He gets trashed constantly. But my point, again, what I was saying is that there was lots of women involved in making games. Um. And it was pretty balanced up to a certain point. And then it slowly became that Spike TV thing because of the way people were marketing games, not necessarily the people who were making games. And it also slowly became like more and more men were involved in creating mm -hmm. this stuff and the women started to get a little, a little burned out, a little chilled out, basically. Well, they, they were like it was like a chilling effect like oh there's less less men make these less women make these and so i think the gender balance in modern game industry is not particularly good um it's not to say that there aren't women though it's not to say that women coming in are outsiders who don't belong and that's the balance i'm trying to strike here is that there's always been women making games we're not outsiders and we've always been women playing games we're not outsiders mm -hmm. but yes there's a lot more men involved in the coding of the games that you play today and involved with the art of the games that you play today and it's because it slowly became a male dominated industry over a long period of time which it didn't necessarily used to be and when people come in and say well i think video games should change because i want to change what the games are there are some people that i think just make your own game like if you want to make your own game make it and make it whatever you want but then when people do that, then they get trashed. They're like, oh, no, we can't let this person in. They're an outsider. And then they get out again. So. I, oh, OK. Yeah, so, you, so you feel like that's what happened with uh, these women? A lot of cases. Yeah. Now, mm. I also think that like like the feminist frequency videos, they're not that particularly good criticism. They're very surface yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. They're women coders who don't care. They just want to code and make a good game. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Well, you can't go in there and shake everything up and change the ball game completely, like without appealing to the audience that was already there. Like that, that's just never going to work, and it's always going to make people pissed off. Right. So what you had after this harassment came out was that you had game journalists um, who were a little bit in deep at that point write these articles that were like oh, we don't want to make, we don't think you should make games for gamers anymore. And Patient Zero for this article was an article called Gamers Are Over that was written by Lee Alexander for Gamma Sutra. Now, Gamma Sutra was an industry magazine. It's now called Game Developer Magazine. And it was an industry website. The audience, in theory, for that article was game developers, not gamers. But... It's not a good article. It's kind of what I would call an own goal, where she basically just told on herself and said, uh, in so many words, I'm burned out from working on video games. <laughs> Which, I mean, okay, that's fine. But when she did that, she was just like, oh, gamers are all shit slinger teenage boys that suck and she basically just like wrote out the stereotype that doritos wanted us to believe about gamers oh about the audience not the people she worked with about the, about the audience about the people who played games she basically like oh god re regurgitated that stereotype so people were pretty mad about that mm. and with it with a yeah yeah it's, oh it's, yes yeah. she was one of the journalists that got uh targeted a lot and then it became a huge firestorm then it yeah, became journalists that. were yelling at gamers and gamers mm. were yelling at journalists because the journalists decided to it, like <laughs> say that gamers needed to shut up, shut the hell up. And like nobody knew what they were defining as a gamer. 
And so that stereotype mm-hmm. kind of became real because marketing works. Yeah. So there's like a whole, there's like a whole Ouroboros of stuff that happened. And it happened very, very, very fast within the course of a couple of weeks over 2014 to the point where when that article came out, most people who read that didn't have the context for why she was mad. Oh, okay. Because she didn't even know about the other harassment that had been happening because she doesn't talk about it very much in the article. She just basically goes right to saying, fuck gamers, I hate them. <laughs> Without explaining, like, the inciting incident that made her write that. Um, like, kind of assuming that developers already knew about this. And I think many developers maybe did. But I also think that there was, like, some insular stuff happening where a lot of people were talking to people and not realizing that, like, the exterior audience wasn't aware of the larger context of what the heck they were writing. So people just got mad because they just didn't know what the hell she was talking about. And then it kind of became this whole, like, what do you mean? What do you mean, fuck gamers? We're right here. We want to play video games. Like, just what are you acting like this to us, you know? Yeah, I do. There's really this stereotype of gamers that's like negative, and like I said earlier, I think I think they're we're just a really misunderstood demographic. Um, it's mm-hmm. just associated with incel dumb and like being right. lazy. And I mean, did the thing know, is, did you know the ga- word incel was also coined by a woman? Oh, really? To, like, to identify herself? Oh, to identify herself? I'm surprised yeah, about that. Yeah, involuntary celibacy. Mm. The first, the first person to call themselves an insult was a woman as well, but it became a movement largely based of men that said that women were denying them stuff, manosphere stuff. So yeah. Ah uh, yes, uh, now it's used by other men to bring down other, other men. men. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> now it's just used as an insult. You sling at people. Yeah. Yeah, for real. The board that um. They, they used to post on a board called Wizard Chan because the I, the stereotype was that if you made it to 30 without having sex, you'd become a wizard. You'd become a wizard? Really? <laughs> yeah. I, so I'm going to stop having sex. <laughs> Too late! You have to be a virgin until you're... If, if, uh... if, you, if you manage to hold off, yeah, you become a wizard. That was, the, that, was the, that was a joke from an anime. Yeah. So they actually, there was actually a board called Wizard Chan. And in fact, I think Wizard Chan was also involved in Gamergate. They were some people that doing the posting. Doing mm. the anti, anti-woman posting at the time. If you make it to 40, you become a more powerful world. I mean, of course, if you come in and you in, uh, insult like the entire audience, uh, people right. are going to lash back. Right. If you decide to say, like, I'm going to insult everybody who plays video games in this yeah. ostensibly gaming-oriented publication... Like, of course, yeah. people are going to be mad about Everybody's that. Everybody's going to get defensive. Yeah, yeah and get <laughs> They're going to get defensive. They're going to say, what the hell? Why are you saying this stuff? We, we're your audience, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't think she thought those were her audience. She was trying to talk to developers. I, okay. Honestly, it comes across as, like, this should have been a rant on your personal blog. This shouldn't have been posted on a professional blog for everybody to see. But, yeah, it's, what's done is done. Um and that was kind of the post, one of the posts that set off like so much of a firestorm about whether, you know, gamers are dead, gamers are over. Are we, you know, we don't, gamers don't have to be your audience anymore. Like all that kind of BS that she said. So that was, that was the, that was most of it. I think I think I've covered it very quickly in a short amount of way. Also, using virgins and insult is slut shaming in another way. Yeah, I think people should not be so up up in all kinds of people's business one way or another like that. Thank you so much for the sub, by the way. Thank you. It wasn't the only article. No, it wasn't because what happened was all the people who um, posted those articles talked to each other, and they all decided, mm-hmm. "Oh, that seems like a good thing to post." So we're going to post an article like that, too. Um, and they basically all just posted the same thing. Ooh, it was really cringe because um, they, they, they were like, yeah, I agree. Because I think what they thought that they were doing was like backing up their friends. Mm. But it, it kind of just came across as like you said, like came across as co- a coordinated hit, even though that, that wasn't really what it, it was more just like they thought they were like backing them up. Um, and then they're like, oh, uh, people will click on this. It makes people mad. So another thing you have to understand is that if you make people mad on the Internet, they'll click on stuff and comment. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, um, 
That's another thing. Did I go over the Five Guys meme? I didn't go over the Five Guys meme, but the meme was that Zoe Quinn, who had that really rough breakup, was dating Five Guys at the same time. Oh, okay. That and that's the- how she got to have those connections. Yeah, that was the that was the meme. Um, they made it into a joke because so they weren't all okay. journalists. No, just the one was so Kota- a journalist for Kotaku. Okay. But so the Gamergate movement is because of all these journalists talking about this, or is it a pushback from the gamers onto the media? Well, the pushback was the Gamergaters. What happened was okay. What what was what's the guy? What's the guy's name? Uh, Adam Baldwin. He was on mm-hmm. Firefly. He was Jane on Firefly, and he went on Twitter because most of the shit went down on Twitter, as you can imagine, and posted a link to the post about the breakup and a post i want to say about anita sarkeesian's project and he and he just put the hashtag gamergate on it and that hashtag became the name of the movement nobody had said gamergate before that but is it a play on gatekeeping or no it's actually wait what you didn't know about you didn't know about adam baldwin yeah he's the guy who coined gamergate yeah jane from firefly correct um it no it was a play on watergate which is a scandal that happened mm. in the U.S. government with Richard Nixon. And mm. now they put gate after anything that might be a scandal. So like Gamergate was like, ooh, it's a gamer scandal. So we're going to call oh, it Gamergate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, just, that, was, that was his coinage. Yeah. Right. Joss Whedon's damage reverberates so strongly. Oh, yeah, it all goes back to Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon's another patient zero for Gamergate. This guy would have had an audience <laughs> if not for. Yeah. <laughs> After the Watergate Hotel. So, right, right. That was the place that was involved in it. So, yeah, that's that's why that that, that got coined. So, <laughs> that got coined on Twitter. It was a Twitter hashtag. And then people started using it as a hashtag when they were like, someday lead gate? God, I hope not. I don't want to be involved in any scandals, please. Please don't involve me in any scandals. Um, so you have a lot of pro gamer gators, uh, which a, a pro gamer gator would be somebody who like says, well, listen, it was just about the ethics and the journalism. We just want journalists to disclose their sources and we want journalists to disclose their connections to other people. And we want like more balanced reporting. And we also don't want these people to fucking shit on us constantly. And I think that's fair. I think all mm-hmm. of that is fair. Um, but I don't think you should harass people on the Internet. Regardless, no, regardless of what they've done or who they the harassment was horrible. And it kind of like it helped prove the point of uh I don't remember their name. An Annie Sarkozy or whatever. Yeah, Anita Sarkeesian? Yeah, yeah. And well, like it it made her a victim. Yeah, and that's the problem, right? Because if you Harriot talked about this on his Doki Bird stream, it's the Streisand effect. If you talk about somebody like they're your enemy and you want to make them like your it works against the reform. If if you want to make them your enemy, like it 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 turns it into a us versus them, but it also mm. makes them way more famous. Yes, it makes them very infamous, and I think the uh, she's still doing stuff to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, she like Anita Sarkeesian is largely not not doing much anymore. Um, I do think she's doing like some consulting. Okay. Like she'll get on Twitter and be like, "You need to do this to your game," and people just kind of ignore stuff. her because. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, like. Mm, honestly like she didn't have a whole lot of interesting stuff to say i want to watch the whole Mm. videos and maybe someday i will watch all the videos because they're interesting in how bland they are like there's really nothing scary about any of these ideas um the problem just saying don't harass people doesn't work on the internet oh yeah that's definitely true like you can't just say like be nice be nice children um one of the things that they teach you is to ignore trolls as much as possible but sometimes it's very difficult. And I think a problem that we had on Twitter in particular, which maybe Twitter is kind of dying now, we don't have to worry about it as much, but a problem we had on Twitter is like, it was so easy to just barrage people with BS on Twitter. It, it was is. easier back then? Why? Well, it still is, but Twitter is just like Elon Muskified now and a lot less people use it. <laughs> I I just think... And I've, I've been saying that for a while, that there needs to be more regulations and 
legislation on the internet, but I'm just not sure how they would go about it. And when I hear stories about people, you know, unaliving themselves because of cyberbullying, and like this one man, they found out that he was behind like 200 accounts created just to bully this uh, like real reality star show who ended up unaliving herself in Japan. I'm just like, how can we not have rules against that? Yeah. I don't think we should let people bully and harass and dox people on the internet. And people definitely, definitely do that because... Yeah, like doxing is legal to a certain degree, like uh, because it's considered public information. So I feel like there could definitely be some tightening up or like seeing revising what the definition is of mm -hmm. doxing. Mm -hmm. And same goes with like harassment. I don't know. Maybe you could put like if you if you make multiple accounts to send hate to somebody, maybe that breaks a rule somewhere uh, because that that's. And that's, that's not free speech anymore. Time. People have done yeah. that on the internet as long as there's been the internet. I mean, back, you know, 10 years before Gamergate, you had people who would make sock puppet accounts and harass themselves so that they would get more popular. And that is, oh. certainly, a, that is certainly an accusation that has been leveled against some of the people involved in Gamergate as well. It's like, oh, that's not real. They're not really being harassed. But the thing is that, like, in, in some cases, yes, and in some cases, no. But I think the real instances in this case definitely outweighs the stuff that, like, people are making up. But you see people doing it on purpose to raise their own profile, mm -hmm. which muddies the waters. Because then when somebody gets harassed on the internet, you're like, oh, well, prove it. And yeah. I don't know about you. And then but, how do you prove it? Right. They'll never accept any proof. And I don't know about you, but, like, if I get a nasty gram, I don't save that. I don't want it in my face anymore. I want to yeah, burn that. I want to delete block. it. I don't want to yeah. look at it. I want to block that person and move on. It's a hard thing to do. So when people are like, well, I need you to share proof. Okay, well, here's the death threat I just got. Okay, well, what's the timestamp on that? What do you, like, like, at what point it, do you have to provide for people that are trolling you to be real? Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. That's crazy. Thankfully, I'm a dictator and I can just have like the military <laughs> uh, make people disappear. Exactly. If I have to. <laughs> you just, you just drop bombs on people and make them disappear. Um, and, uh, Reba, I know you're close to running out of time. I have loved having you on the stream. I hope we can chat again yeah. sometime. Me maybe, too. Maybe I can hang out on YouTube and we can talk VTubers. Yeah, you're so clever. It, it's God. really been great. I'm sure you have a lot more to say, and I'm really curious to see, uh, to hear what, everything else that you got to say. I feel like we're going to have a lot of really good conversations together. I feel like we could. I feel like I cut this part of the conversation short because I knew you I knew you had time, but I did want to yeah, do I'm like sorry. the whole history thing. And mm -hmm. drinking collab? Yeah, well, I'd be mm. happy to join you for the next uh, drinking collab y'all did. That stream was mm -hmm. hilarious. If you guys haven't watched her drinking oh, collab, watched that. Oh, of course I watched that. Well, I watched part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty hammered by the end of it. Y'all write VTubers. Listen, I have a pretty high booze tolerance. I could oh, go, okay. I could go one for one. I could go Drink for me you. under the table. <laughs> I, <laughs> made us sound, drunk sounds silly. Yeah, I'm one of those funny drunks. Just remember, alcohol is bad for you. Yeah, it is, fun. it is bad for you. I try not to drink too much. I try not to do too many substances. Today, I'm on that soda drug, which is also bad for you, but in a different way. I'm on the gamer fuel. The gamer fuel. Yeah, you that's know. the other thing too that I noticed. Well, like even <laughs> sponsors, they don't really know what to do with us. They're like, yeah, you can, you know, you can advertise our gacha games or our uh, energy drinks, and uh, that's it. You know, they don't. They they're like that. What do gamers like? They like junk food. They like uh, the gamer supplements, drinks, and uh, they got uh, they like other video games. They don't have a life or a personality outside of that. <laughs> right and that's not true because if you go to a con we have true. everything we do everything yeah. i have gamer cross stitch i have made yeah gamers are not people uh, <laughs> yeah gamers are not people insulted I, it, when you insult when you say oh fuck gamers but on the other hand like there's a stereotype right like gamers are mm. nerds and they're losers and <laughs> exactly. i mean i worked on some like uh tech projects like uh like part of the the marketing and stuff and a, a big point uh, for like the new VR sets was that they wanted to make sure that the gamers represented in the marketing looked cool and looked um like a 
yeah, look cool and modern. They didn't want them to look like uh, the stereotype, like fat or uh, unhealthy, stinky and all of that. They wanted them to yeah. look cool, trendy, et cetera, which I think is a good way to go. Yeah. it's it, I, If you want people to try your stuff, I think it's wrong to insult them. And I feel like mm. I feel like those Slim Jim commercials and stuff like that is kind of insulting. Like the Doritos Pope stuff, it's kind of insulting, right? You mm -hmm. kind of feel like you're being shit on. Like that Laura Croft commercial I showed earlier, it's kind of insulting. Mm. I don't feel like a cool person being shown that. And I think yeah. nobody wants to be insulted. They don't want to be insulted by game journalists. They don't want to be insulted by game commercials. We want to see our mm -hmm. shit and go, dang, that looks really cool. And Sometimes it does look really cool. Sometimes they get yeah, it needs to be right. inspirational. Yeah. yeah, like sell me a dream because that's the essence of gaming is we want to dream a little and like we're all dreamers. We want to escape. It's the escapism is is big for me. Like an oh my god, Mighty Number no. Nine, where they said you're gonna get beaten like an wait you're gonna be what what was it you're gonna be nerd lonely like an anime nerd on prom night, bro. We're <laughs> anime nerds, of course. Don't insult anime nerds. That's us. I'm literally an anime. Yeah. I, I mean, I think anime is, is a lot more accepted now. And uh, there's a lot of cool people that like anime. And, and now there's a lot more like large figures like Henry uh, Cal. Who does the guy that plays Superman? Henry Cavill? That, yeah, yeah. He loves video games. So it's becoming more and more mainstream to be open about it. Yeah. And the more, like, cool people show, like, hey, we're gamers, too. And we're also, like, full-on adults. But when you've yeah. got people saying shit like, oh, only boy, only little boys play video games. Video games are for adults. Well, I hope I've disproven to you that video games are for... I've hope I've proven to you that video games are for adults mm -hmm. and they're for everybody. Mm -hmm. And if, you're, if you don't think that there's a video game that, that is good for you out there, there probably is one. They're designed for everybody. Just like VTubers are for everybody, if you really think about it. Because we're just people streaming. Doing yeah. Live streams. There's uh, different VTubers types now. So they really are for everybody. Mm -hmm. If you don't like anime, that's fine. You know, there's a lot of people who don't like anime, actually. Mm -hmm. And I think all VTubers are PDF files. But I feel like those people would probably be okay with watching a more cartoon-looking VTuber or just another genre of VTuber. Yeah, I mean, I have friends that have different styles. There's pixel mm -hmm. VTubers. There's um, there's painting VTubers that look like works of actual art. There's goblins, yeah. Have you seen that goblins. fairy VTuber? Oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. Yeah. I forget her name, she's but I so know cool. who you're talking about. She's mm -hmm. super, super, super cool. Um, yeah, Rita, Rita, Rima is not a PD. She's not, <laughs> she's not a she's not a ping. We did get the collab to work today, so it looks good. Uh, never forget Tool Bear. I don't know Tool Bear. Megan Thee Stallion. She watches anime. Megan Thee Stallion watches JoJo. She oh, had that JoJo does? cosplay. Yeah. Oh, cool. Have you seen her JoJo cosplays? They're really good. I mean, even in high fashion, uh, in the last few years, we've had like Balenciaga do like a Final Fantasy inspired collection. And their campaigns were all oh, yeah. like, looked yeah. like everything was Photoshop. So it looked like 3D. Um, there's this other brand, GCD Wear. That's uh, done like full on prints of hentai and stuff. And, oh my gosh. And this collection's been worn by like uh, celebrities like Dua Lipa. Tool Bear, some guy's dad. Oh, I remember Tool Bear now. Yeah, the bear VTuber that reviews. Yeah. <laughs> Video games are only for kids, is such a weird argument. People think kids made them. Right. It's stupid. It's a silly thing to mm -hmm. say. Some video games are obviously for kids. Mm -hmm. Like, some games are for kids. I'm not going to say some aren't. I would feel weird playing Roblox. Roblox is for kids. It's not for me. But there's also video games for adults. Duh. And, and video there's, games were for adults. Yeah. And there's also games just like movies. For example, like the, the Disney movies, you can watch them as a kid and enjoy them. And then you can watch them as an adult and be like, oh, that was a sex joke, but it was really subtle. <laughs> like, but you get it as you're older. Yeah, you can watch that stuff in a different light when you get older and realize that, hey, there was yeah. stuff in there that's like, yeah, people don't realize a variety of gaming. Yeah, people don't realize that there's so much out there some, for most of people. And people that come and say, well, I don't think that games are good because I haven't seen a game that's for me. It kind of just feels like you haven't looked. Cause there's yeah, you haven't looked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, Pokemons can be enjoyed by both adults and children. It's just that the children, they play it, like, very one-dimensional. And when you're an adult, you probably explore the other parts of the game, too. And you understand it more fully. 
Are you are you a Pokemon fan? I was like in the Pokemon community, yeah. Cool, awesome. Yeah, I'm a Pokemon fan for sure. I've I was like um I really liked Sun Moon. I played a lot of that. And mm-hmm. then I didn't like Sword Shield very much, so I kind of dropped off. But I really yeah. liked, I really liked the cartoon back in the day. Oh yeah. Maybe cartoon a car- was a cartoon banger. Cartoon lecture one day. I can lecture on cartoons to like a very small like i can i can go like super mm. deep on cartoons like i can pick like a one little thing and talk about it for a super long time so do, next one's gonna be on anime anime yeah oh anime i love anime that'd oh, be I cool be here if i was i wouldn't be here if not for anime yeah i'd i'd love to hear a lecture on anime i was so sad about toriyama i literally mm. i literally wept and wept after i found out like i like after i got off stream that night i was devastated Oh yeah, it was just so it was heartbreaking. I I grew up with you know Dragon Quest and Chrono Trigger and Dragon Ball and all that stuff. Oh so. yeah, the, Dragon Ball was my introduction to anime for sure. You're in Tokyo. That's very cool. Oh wow. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning in today. I think we're about to wrap up. I know you have to get some sleep. Oh yes. <laughs> we're A already snack because like- I can't sleep the empty stomach and then sleep. Oh, uh, we're already a little bit past your time, so. It's been such a pleasure. I'm going to find it's somebody to pass the raid to. Um, okay. And for anybody who came by who's new to the stream, hey, uh, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for joining. We do a lot of things here. You can look at my schedule down in the bottom, and I do a little bit of a like a lecture like this about once a month. Um, and I know I didn't talk as much about Gamergate as other things, but there's just a lot to talk about. I probably could do Mm -hmm. like two more lectures just about like women in video games and feminism. I wanted to Mm. watch like more of these videos and react to them. There's a lot of older videos. I appreciate the discussion from chat. I know we had a lot of folks with different opinions, and that just is a spice of life to me. I want to hear more of what people are doing. So yeah, if you do react to those videos on stream, I'll definitely tune in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I will probably post this VOD tomorrow. Karaoke? Okay, now, okay. Rima, you've been dared to do karaoke. Oof, karaoke? I don't think so. <laughs> I can't sing. <laughs> the problem is that I can and will at the drop of a hat. So <laughs> you wouldn't want the, unless, unless, you wouldn't want me to put me with somebody who doesn't, doesn't want to sing, because uh, yeah, that would be... <laughs> No, Rima is super cool. If you aren't subscribed to her Twitch, she's also on YouTube. YouTube is her big one. Um, she's got a great YouTube channel. You can do French versions of anime songs. Do you know the French version of any anime songs? E, no, not to anime songs. Uh-huh. Okay, I know what's, French songs. What's rule number one of karaoke? Okay, I don't know any French songs, so you've got me there. If you go to karaoke, you have to sing. You do have to sing. Part of the program. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <sighs> Uh, you want to see my cosplay? Uh, well, I'm sure I can post it up at some point. I have gone like full VTuber, so I don't do the immersion breaks as often, but I definitely have done a lot of cosplay in the past. Uh, less less, less so after COVID, because I wasn't going to as many cons, um, but I was happy to get that one made. Oh, mm-hmm. let's see. Who can, who can we raid? Who's out there that we can raid? We... Uh, we dump our raid on somebody big or small i think it's always good to raid somebody small they're like really grateful yeah that's nice huh you know what eldritch grandpa just started streaming um oh there you go they're really fun uh do you know eldritch grandpa was he on your stream last time uh we have talked before um okay they they um he did a he did a stream uh interviewing the freakazoid voice actor which was super super cool um and it looks like he just started so the pink bunny cosplay. nice oh if did, did i did i see what happened an hour ago no i was here what what happened an hour ago did i get something crazy happen oh i never know when i never know when things happen to me um hey i have a throne I'm out of bath bombs. If anybody wants to buy me bath bombs, you should buy me bath bombs. Nice. <laughs> I'm out. I have one left, and I, I, it's too. It's almost one of those ones that's like too nice. I feel like I'm saving it for a special occasion. But I love. I love the bath bomb. I love baths. Um. Oh, use your. Oh, there's some cover stuff happening right now. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, I'd like to learn more about that as well. So, with this in the world, big news in VTubers. Big news for Cover oh. Corp, because they just announced that new studio. Yeah. So happy for them. 
I'm so excited to see them spread more into the states and see more hollow EN stuff coming out. Interesting. I think with hollow EN, they are going to be, um, they said they're building a USA studio, so hopefully it's got some 3D stuff in it, and that would be really cool. I hope. They, have the new they haven't studio. mentioned anything about studio yet, so we'll see. Yeah, they're moving some of their operations, they said. We don't know what Yeah, exactly. we don't know if this will include a studio. Uh, yeah. It, it, the article that. didn't say anything about that. Yeah. The they're article didn't say now. much. Mm -hmm. Do we know? We don't know exactly what they're building, huh? Nope. Well, I, guess I think we'll... it's going to be an administrative center, first and foremost. That's my idea, but we'll see. That makes Before sense. More, yeah. Because they probably want to hire more talent, which means they want to hire more managers, which means they want to have an established base in English so that they can mm. like, maybe spread out and do more stuff. I don't know. Gura needs a Wrangler. A Gura to stream. <laughs> hey, I have no problem with Gura just like sitting back and collecting money. I the based, honestly. If I could just sit back and collect money, I would. Yeah. I mean, she's an IP now. She, she's a face. She's the, an image. She's awesome. She can, mm -hmm. Gura can do whatever she wants. Exactly. <laughs> That's my I agree like with that. <laughs> All right, we're running out of steam. I'm going to let you go. Let's go ahead and do the raid thing. I'm going to put my theme song on. Okay. So we've got the music. And again, I so appreciated having you here today. Thank you so much for everything. No, thank you for having me. Oh, you, you are very, very cool. All right, everybody. <laughs> Let's take care. We will see you next time. My next stream is Thursday. We're going to be doing some Helldivers again on this channel. Uh, and I'm also going to do a snack box unboxing because I got my new snack box on Thursday. So we're going to eat some snacks. Uh, like a gamer. Gamer snacks. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.